episode of Code X After Dark. This is Comics Unleashed. My name is uh, Dan Kelly Art. Right next to me is Dan <laughs> Kelly Art. And Did underneath you is that? the just now i never look at that i always think it's the way it should be <laughs> but underneath me is the beautifully talented uh never underestimated always challenged uncle gary ladies and gentlemen we hope you've had a beautiful weekend so far because it's about to get awesome uh so stick around gentlemen how you doing today while i change my name it's it's about to get easter oh it is yeah, we're we're less than an hour away from Easter, man. I yeah, can't buddy. wait. Easter Bunny's hopping around right now. You know, you're talking about movies. You talked about uh, Batman changed your life. You know, what movie changed my life. What's that? Debbie does that with the Deep. The Almost deep. on the same. The Deep. Uh, go into an explanation, Gary. I'm very curious to hear this. The first five minutes of that movie changed my life because it's a scuba diving scene now let's see the deep came out i want to say in 70 gosh was it 77 maybe and i was uh i was 13 <coughs> and there was a scuba diving scene with jacqueline Bissett wearing oh, a white t-shirt <laughs> nothing under it just a white t-shirt five minutes of that and my 13 year old self my life was never the same. Never the same. <laughs> never. Put me on a, Everybody in the good. audience now is going on Netflix, Amazon, be like the deep, movie. the deep, the first five. Where can I see three. that? Oh my god, it was great, so Richard. Like, hello, uh, good Richard, sir, hello, Richard. So you know, those life changing for me. That was life changing, life affirming. You were going to say, wow. There, there were some affirmings. All right. I think. I think my. I, th I think uh, the movie like that that changed my life uh, forever was Under Siege. Where, oh, uh, the, oh, with Erica Eleniak. Where she pops out of the birthday cake. I was like, okay. That was, right, that was a, what's his face uh, movie? Um, Steven Seagal. Seagal, yeah. One of his few good ones. My, my, as a matter of fact, my, my wife now, our first date, we went and saw the sequel to that where they're on the train. I, <laughs> nice. I'm just see too, that, that uh, they, Steven Seagal's best movie is Executive Decision, and he dies like ten minutes into it. He was, yeah, he was in that movie for all of ten minutes, and he. I like, it. I liked Above the Law a lot. I like that. Movie. That was good. Yeah, I don't know. He's just such a d bag in real life. Well, like, that, when you hear yes, all these yes. stories about like the stuff that he's done, and but his know. action movies up to a point were really good. Yeah. I, I, I was never, I was never a huge fan of him. When you I find out, like, like I, you know, like Van Damme, I used to like his movies a lot. I mean, I still do, you know. But yeah. uh, him and Dolph Lundgren never really got into Steven Seagal much. Seagal, you know, in all his movies for a while, they're all always three words. You know, <laughs> for uh, a bunch of them were three word movies. Above the law, marked for death. Yeah, yeah, I can't Under remember a lot. Under siege. Of Two. <laughs> Under Siege Two would be three words. Yeah. Like Van Dam had some great ones, man. He had Kickboxer. He had a Hard Target. That was an awesome one. Time uh, Cop is like one I like. Which one? Time Cop is one I like. Time Cop. Yes. Yeah, he had um the Blood Quest. Sport. Blood Sport. Have you seen the Quest? The Quest is no. one of the greatest. Don't remember that. The Quest is one of the greatest martial arts movies you'll ever see. Didn't he do Double Impact with Vanilla Ice? No, he did double impact with himself. Oh, that's played, right. He played brothers. Yeah. Universal Soldier, that movie's fantastic. Super Double Extreme Impact. Pam, thank you for that <laughs> entrance. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> what was he? The Muscles from Brussels, right? The, that's yeah. right. The but straight up, if you, watch, if, you, if you watch The Quest, yeah, I remember that, like, you know, for all I the remember years, it from a long time ago, but I never saw it. Like for all the years I took karate, and you know, we would, you would, of course, you know, we would talk about like best kung fu movies, best yeah. martial arts movies, and everyone was always like, "This is one of the best martial arts movies you'll ever see." There's so many different fighters and different styles in it. And the stories, you know, did that cool. come out after Mortal Kombat or before? After, I think. Okay. Like it, it was kind of. It seemed like it was set up that they were going to similar. Do, that they were going to like do more of them, and they just for whatever reason never did. Now, what do you guys think about like movies that are so bad they're good? And with Van Damme, we'll just go along with that. Uh, oh, he's definitely got a few that are just 
Street Fighter. That's terrible. Street, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's have Van Damme play this American soldier and not even try to with the tattoo. <laughs> yeah, it's like in Hunt for Red October when they had Sean Connery play a Russian and not even attempt so a Russian accent. Vasily, one yeah. king only. Did, have you uh, speaking of Connery? Have you seen Vardas? No, oh, yeah, that costume. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Imagine walking on the set. All right, gentlemen, I'm ready to to show you my shaba. My well, have you ever heard? Have you ever heard his explanation for why he did League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? I think he, it was for the paycheck. Like he didn't yeah, understand a single word or something, He's, right? He said, he said, um, I got offered the Matrix, and I didn't understand. I turned it down because I didn't understand it. I got offered <laughs> Lord of the Rings, and I turned it down because I didn't understand it. I got offered this movie too, and I don't understand it, but I'm not turning another one down. Well, yeah, those <laughs> movies the movie that made him quit. <laughs> those movies ended up being like huge, fantastic, you know, timeless movies. And then the one he picks to star in is like this timeless piece of shit that took an, <laughs> amazing, took an amazing book and turned it into a cheesy popcorn summer now, movie. Now, as someone that has yet to read The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I enjoyed the movie. I thought the movie was okay. Oh, it sounds like someone needs to have that as a as the uh, as the um, the review on the, the podcast review for the podcast is the original League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Well, Dan, when you, when you grace us with your presence on the podcast, make that your recommendation. Then I might. I actually have a list of uh, I have a list <laughs> of like mini series because remember I used to do on the character of the page uh, character of the day page where I would have like the weekly recommended reading and i would yeah. like pick a book and i'd post you know it was like two years ago where i like post a bunch of artwork from it i'd give a description yeah. of the book and then i have a link where it said if you want to read it click here and go read it online and then like the more i did it at for a whole year towards the end it kind of tailed off because i was like nobody's like nobody's engaging with this nobody's reacting yeah. so i'm just I, you know i was like i'm not going to keep putting the work into doing all this for nothing, but I've still got that list. So I was like, all right, whatever, whatever days here and there, I'm on the, the, you know, the main podcast and it's my, it gets to be my turn to pick a reading. Like I've got a few off of here that were ones nice. that I really loved. Well, even though nobody was really engaging with that, ladies and gentlemen, we really want to engage with you, Gary. We want to engage with them so much. What do we have to give them? For everyone that's watching, what we have to give them. <laughs> Is all Perfect. of the hosts here? What we oh. have is we have all the soaps. I mean, every damn one of them. We have them all. And we would like nothing more than to give them to you. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite social media platform. And where we're live streaming right now, make right. sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, and follow so you don't miss content like this all the time, every time. If you're watching on YouTube, Super Chats are now available and memberships have been added to. And I worked tirelessly over uh, about 20 minutes to make <laughs> awesome emojis for you. And uh, membership badges. Go check them out. the The new member badges is a picture of Dan eating a donut. Ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't entice you, I don't know what will. Badges. Uh, you need some of these stinking badges. That's you can, right. You can enjoy a picture of me enjoying a Krispy Kreme donut. There is it the one where I'm wearing the little Krispy yeah. Kreme hat? Too? Yeah. yeah. I I saw it and I was like, that's perfect. It's beautiful. So 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 the quote badges. We don't need no stinking badges. Where did that originate from? What uh, that, that came from UHF when he was throwing badgers out the window. Right? Yeah, badgers. Yeah. You're right. Badgers, you're out. <laughs> Absolutely right. There you go. Uh, a Western movie. I don't remember the name of it, though. A Southern Western. Um, the Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Hey, there you go. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, also, don't forget, head over to thecodexstation.com for all your Codex needs. Get some merch, meet the team, and so much more. Once again, thecodexstation.com, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for your showcase, if you care, we're going to have a random Olympic showcase. Ooh, I like that. Richard says Codex has no gaps in the socials. That is correct. No gaping holes. Uh, Doug is in the house. Hey, Doug, how's it going? Hello, Doug. Good to see you. You're welcome. All hello, right. hello. And if, you, so, if you'll notice when we were talking about the movies, uh, Richard chimed in with the quest as well. Oh, did he? Yeah. 
Oh, wait, let me see. I got to find it. Ah, oh, the quest. He did. Holy smokes. Look at that. Richard, I'm I, sorry I, I missed that. I, I guess my favorite bad movie is Plan 9 from Outer Space. I mean, that's, oh. the, that's, the, that's the classic. That's the greatest, right? I mean, yeah, it's, that, 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 no. that is. Oh, it's okay. Too because, because my favorite Tim Burton movie is Ed Wood. People yeah. always say like, "Oh, Beetlejuice or Edward." Ed, Ed, Ed what is good? Ed, what is good? What is good? Tor. Oh my God, Tor's acting in that movie oh, yeah. is, is just amazing. There's so many things. Vampirella not doing anything except the skinny <laughs> legs, and the uh, the fact that Bella Gosi died <laughs> filming this movie, oh and they God. hired somebody else for the rest of the movie to run around with a cape like this, it was, it was a to be Bella. Yes. Was a dentist that like yes. he saw the, the guy's like face half cover. He's like, oh my god, he looks like Bella Lugosi. Just have him walk around like that. That's yeah. wonderful. My favorite uh so bad it's good is Troll 2. Oh my I've god, Nilbog is goblin spelled backwards. Well, Dad, what are you doing with your belt? I'm tightening it to stave off the hunger pains. And of what? course, the greatest quote from that movie. You can't piss all over hospitality. I won't allow it. <laughs> no. What was it where he's standing there and the fly is buzzing in his face? They've uh, Nilbog is gobbling backwards. They've gotten them. Now they're going to get me or something like that. I can't. And, and it's like all of them are just like, they're just like dwarves that are wearing like sacks with, with masks from a Halloween shot that don't even move. And it's funny, it has nothing to do with the original Troll movie. They just yeah. called it that because they're like, oh, for marketing, like, yeah, because the original Troll movie was such a blockbuster hit that people, you know, flocked to it in droves. Gary, have you ever seen Troll 2? I have not seen Troll 1. You have. You don't need you don't to watch one to see two. <laughs> Other than the I, I'm just trying to tell you, I wasn't going down the troll highway. So <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't stop at the exit to see Troll 1. So Troll 2 was not on my agenda. You have got to see this. This is one of the worst movies ever made. And it is so bad, it is good. Oh. Uh, and and Birdemic. Birdemic is beautiful in all its digital glory. Oh, take a look, oh, ladies and gentlemen. The boss is here. Eyes okay. are watching. If you're talking about bad movies too, well, it's funny. Have you seen the documentary they made about Troll Two? A while ago, I know it's on YouTube, uh, but yeah. I haven't seen it in a while. This, they, this is a this is a deep dive for a terrible movie. Wow, ladies a and gentlemen, on it. It's it is a Troll cultural II. phenomenon. It is so good. It, oh. It's called Troll Two: The Best Worst Movie Ever Made. Yeah. And it well, interviews like all these cat, like all the cast members and all the fans. The documentary is so funny. The dad's uh, well, a dentist. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you a bad movie that I can watch almost every time it's on, even though it's so bad. But there are other reasons for it. Is Showgirls? Showgirls. Oh my god! I'm like, you know what? I could watch this for a while. <laughs> Going <laughs> from Saved by the Bell to Showgirls and. The, that's a career change. Well, also, also Gina Gershon in that too. Yeah. Let's not forget about one of the uh, one of the worst movies ever made, The Room. The Room. Oh, hi, now, that that I haven't seen, and I've been told I need to see it. Uh, Doug here I says did not hit the, I didn't. I swear. Oh, hi, yeah. mom. Doug says I think my favorite so bad it's good is Velocipaster. I have heard of that. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but in fairness, they made it bad on purpose, so maybe it doesn't count. No, it counts. The room is just that's one you gotta watch, Gary, because yeah, it's ten, oh, I heard, I, I the, lead, the lead actor the lead actor so is a bad nut job. Yeah, it's so bad, but it's and they so made, bizarre too because it doesn't like it doesn't really tell a coherent story. And there's stuff in it, like this one character that's the mother of an of a character. Horrible, Jamie. <laughs> there, there's one character where she goes, no, Jamie, terrible. Goes, terrible, uh, Jamie. She goes, um, yep, it, I went to the doctors, and they told me I've got cancer. And, and that's said, all you ever heard of it, the rest of the fucking movie. She says it just like that. There was no mention of anything with that before it, and it's never brought up again in the movie. And all these framed pictures that are in the in this house that they the live spoon. in, they're all just picture, they're framed pictures of spoons. Uh, Eternal, we are on every Saturday unless it's Christmas. 
or Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving never falls on a Saturday. So unless it's Christmas or New Year's, we're always on. Nice. Uh, hello, Adam. How you doing, brother? And Sal did not get fired. He's just uh, fashionably late. He should be on within the next couple minutes or so. We're going to give him another. There you go. We'll give him another five minutes. If he's not here within five minutes, then we will jump into the main show. And Sal will jump in whenever he gets here. And it's funny. In the room, too, uh, there was there's like a character in the beginning of the movie. And then it took him so long to shoot this movie. The guy, like, I forget the reason, left. So, they, yeah. so he just got a, he just a, a, a whole movie. different actor. He had, he got another actor to play a different character that was essentially the same thing that just shows up halfway through the movie. This guy disappears, and another guy shows up to like take his place. It's just it's so bizarre. And then you read the stuff about it, how like it was you know, they were going to be like like he was going to be a vampire, and there was oh going to be like a flying God. car. And well, I know they did a, they. Uh, they did a movie about the movie. Yes. The, yeah, the disaster artist. Oh my god, that's just as good. Well, the the one of the one of the guys that was a star of the movie wrote the book The Disaster Artist that they then made the movie of. Yeah. Uh Eternal says doing well Uncle Gary. Can't believe my first show of the season is in 2 weeks going to have more than just comics this time to sell. Oh, well there you go. Excellent. Yeah. Good luck with that, Adam. Is that going to be a big lick? Uh, maybe, oh. yeah, I guess so. That's right. Snoopy JP lit. says hello, mellow fellows. Hello yourself, sir. Good to see you. Hello. All yep, right, big lick right around the corner, fellas. There you yep. go. All right, gentlemen, Sal's not here. I am ready to go. Are you guys ready to go? Yep, Let's I'm see. gonna wait for the groovy bass tones and run upstairs and grab my soda. There you go. Can he do it in 40 seconds, ladies and gentlemen? You say 40, but it's really 30. Right. Well, well 30 seconds for the countdown and then 10 seconds for the codex intro. So you got okay, 40 okay, seconds. 40 seconds. All right, yeah, 40 seconds. We okay, got one more thing. You, you, you can't if you leave, it's like the Olympics. If you leave before the gun sounds, you're disqualified. That's <laughs> right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in 40 seconds. Until then, sit back, relax, and enjoy these groovy bass tones. <laughs> you ready? Here we go. He didn't make it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Gary. oh there no, he it's because I, I stopped to talk to my wife. <laughs> he needed 45 her, seconds. Where she wants to hide our daughter's Easter basket. 45 seconds. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Codex After Dark Comics Unleashed. My name is Tim the Terrible. This beautiful man over here is Dan the Kelly Art. And underneath him, holding up the pillars of Codex, is Uncle Gary, the curator of the Library of Comics. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are ready for an awesome show because we have got a ton of stuff to show you today. And Gary, what What's is up, the tons of stuff? Tons, tons of stuff. Yeah, stuff. What is uh, the uh, secret word for the showcase tonight? The showcase, a few secret words. The showcase is going to be kind of an, it's going to be a Olympic grab bag. Ooh. There'll be some gold. There'll be some silver. Ooh. Uh, and maybe a bronze. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. That will be toward the end of hey, tonight's program. Hey, Wes. Wes is in the house. Rebel scum, ladies and gentlemen. We recorded some awesome material for you earlier today that will be coming out here pretty soon. Give us about 30 seconds. We're going to pay some bills. Uh, and then we will dive right into tonight's episode. Gary, you have uh, the deets on who our sponsor is for tonight. 
why don't you go ahead and let everybody know who that oh, is? Oh, well, our sponsor. And first, let me say, hey, Chris, glad you're in the chat, brother. Um, Comic Logic, Comic Logic sponsor, a proud sponsor of the Codex Station. Comic Logic, also my personal comic shop, also a shop that I am a part owner of, a small, small part, but part owner of. And I am proud to be that. And we are Loudoun County, Virginia's only comic book store. So if you're in the Northern Virginia area, please come in and see us in person. We'd love to have you walk through the door. It, it you know, we always, we always love to see folks talk comics, mm -hmm. sell comics, have comics for you to view, have art on the wall for you to view. You, you can see Mr. Dan Kelly's art on the wall. If That's you'd right. Like to, you'd like or to you walk out. With the, yeah. Buy his art so he can buy more books. Absolutely. So artists comic, are starving, ladies and gentlemen. Right. They have they no food. Look at them. me, I'm withering away. <laughs> look, look, he needs more comics to sustain him. He needs to get more four color ink in his bloodstream. So at Comic Logic, we have three great big events uh, that we want to talk about. On April 20th, we have our ninth anniversary show, uh, ninth anniversary celebration. Nine years. So that's that's a pretty awesome deal for a comic shop. Mm -hmm. Nine years. We'll have we'll probably probably have a little cake, uh, maybe a little you know thank you for all our wonderful customers. We want to say thank you, you know when you come in on our anniversary, we'd like to thank you for your support and your patronage for all these years. So please come see us. Our really big event is Free Comic Book Day. That that is May the fifth, and is also or May the fourth, and May the fourth is also Star Wars Day. So the two coincide; they cross. So what are we going to do? We're going to celebrate it up special by having Mr. Brendan Wayne who plays the Mandalorian when the helmet is on. That's Mr. Wayne doing the acting. So you will see him. He'll be signing autographs. And Mr. Wayne, for me, what's a big thrill is he is the bloodline of Hollywood royalty. He is John Wayne's grandson. And for me, John Wayne is my guy. I love, love, love John Wayne movies, and I can't get enough of them. So that's, that's something my grandfather infused in me, and I can't. You know, so for me to meet John Wayne and John Wayne will actually be take John Wayne's grandson will be taking a tour of the Library of Comics here. So that's a huge thrill for me that I'll have that going on. And then our last event I want to uh, promote is on um, Sunday, May, um, May 19th. Mm -hmm. We have our um, Spring Lot Con and our Spring Lot Con is where we will turn our our parking lot outside of our store into a mini comic con. So we'll have comic vendors, we'll have toys, we'll have local artists, we'll have local authors. So a whole lot of great fun things to do. We also, it's family friendly. Um, Dan, Dan and Sal uh, both came with uh, their daughters last uh, last year and their, and their families and they had a really good time. So we're family friendly. So please come see us um, for any of those events. And, um, you know, we are always here to make more friends. So please come, come say, hey, you know, we saw you on the Codex station and we want to come by and see the store in person. We'd love to have you. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Comic Logic, the comic store in Loudoun County, Virginia. Right over here is the address. Make sure if you're in the area to stop in there and say hello to the entire Comic Logic team. Absolutely. Good people. Yes, they are. Absolutely. All right, are we ready to get into some books here? Let's see some books. Ready waiting. Let's do this. Okay, I will let's go. First. I've been let's let Sal go first. Oh yeah, where's Sal? Go ahead, Sal. Sal, Sal go ahead. No. Sal, what Sal? What Sal? You mean Sal? You finally agree that Beast is an Avenger? You know, I've been waiting a long time for you to say that. A long no. time to agree, and and you're not. You know, and I'm going to say it. The Beast is an Avenger. No rebuttal. It must be a fact. Sal's got nothing to say about that. I so think so. It must be true. I um, remember hearing him say that uh, secretly he agrees with you on everything. I, I, I know he does. He just can't bring himself to say it in public. Oh, uh, I heard the chimes. Guess who is here right now? And I'm not going to let him in because uh, we all agree that uh, Gary is right forevermore on the Beast. Uh being an, ex right. <laughs> being an ex or an Avenger. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Wow. Yeah. It's so much easier when he can't defend himself. Oh, there ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to full screen for just a moment. There's Let me the bring man. this beautiful man up in his rightful position and then take it. You know, away. I was at the uh, I was at the hockey game tonight and I saw yeah. my new best friend, Mike Harbour. Oh. oh, you oh. saw Mike at the game tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's my new best friend. You know why? <laughs> you know why? Because well, he, he said 
No, he changed it and said the beast was a defender. Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Neutral ground, ladies and yep. gentlemen. All right, let's get into that. let's get into some books. So right, first good. things first. Uh, new polls for first. the week, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go yes. ahead and get started with Green Arrow. Number nice. Yeah, there you go. I haven't like read it. it yet. This is going to be read tomorrow during coffee time. During coffee time. That's right. Yes. Coffee time. Uh, I love the way the series is going so far, and I can't wait to dive into it some more. Two, two creams, two sugars? Uh, no cream, no sugar. Uh, straight. Hmm. Like my motor oil. There we go. <laughs> Superman number 12, ladies and gentlemen. Still, I think, one of the greatest DC titles that's out right now. Uh, uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but issue 12 is the last issue in this epic storyline that they've been doing. Is that right? It is, and then it it's the last page teases the next storyline, which is going to be a crossover between Superman and Action, and Ooh. well, it's Lobo's going to be in it, and there Lobo's we go, main man, and some other stuff too. All right, so yeah, twelve issues, first major story arc. Uh, coming to an end. I can't wait to read this tomorrow. <clears throat> Next is uh, also one of the best DC titles that's out right now. I know that some people may or may not disagree with that. Uh, Richard, you are absolutely correct. I think we need to talk about Sal's attendance issues. Next time you're late, it's a write-up. <laughs> I think we need to talk about Sal's attitude right now because he is like, I don't want to be you know messed with right now, so you just back off. Sal, did you did you bring it today? Sal, we only we, we still got a point, baby. We still we got still a got point. a point. Still yeah, but point. when you have a when you have a four minute power play in the well, no, I agree with still, that. That test that. was they crap. Had a four minute did, power play in overtime, a double made double minor, and they could not score a goal. Did you bring it today, Sal? Did I bring it today? Yeah. Did you bring it? Yes, I'm you always brought, bringing it. You brought it your hard. attitude. Oh yeah, to the game. Oh yeah, I brought my attitude. I brought that to the game too. Oh my hear about god! The, you want to hear about I cussed the Boston fan out? You know? Oh my god! Uh, Eric, your daughter, in the middle of the show. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right, let's, Sorry, let's go ahead. move on here. Middle of the show. Wonder yeah, Woman the pre -show. number seven. Uh, I think Wonder Woman's a great title. I am thoroughly enjoying every bit of this so far. That's a uh, fun issue. I haven't read it yet. This will also get read tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to it. this one, though. I did read that's it for my DC. Uh, this I did read. And this is one of the most grotesque series I am reading right now. Gary, you as a horror lover, you need to be reading this uh, beneath the trees where nobody sees. Mm. It is wow. wild. Absolutely okay. wild. Wow, you have to read this. What issue number is that? This is issue four. And it's going to five or six issues, I believe. I may so pick that up and trade then. Okay. You absolutely need to. Uh, next, I have G.I. Joe 305. Haven't oh, read this yet nice either. Nice cover. But beautiful yeah. cover. Cuber, Andy Cuber, right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. I love it. That's nice. I love it. This I did read, uh, Cobra Commander number three. Dan, I am loving where this is going right now. Uh, did, you read, did you read that one? Yes, I did. I, I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The bodyguard is who I it's who I figured it was gonna be, but it was still a really cool reveal. Yeah, very much so. If you're not reading the Energon Universe, ladies and gentlemen, I recommend getting on that train. Uh, there's plenty of time. Uh, also read this, uh, Duke number four, uh, great issue two. Uh, both of these titles are doing really, really well. At least in my eyes, and I'm really enjoying where these are going right now. Only one more issue for Duke. Yep, and that's it. It needs to be an ongoing Scarlet uh, Destro. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I got that on my polls too. All right, next is uh Conan the Barbarian, number nine. Look Great that cover. Guitar. That is a fantastic cover. That is nice. so amazing. What is, what is best that, in life? Is that uh, Diodato? Yes, Mike Diodato. And that's the A cover. Uh, I showed the first six issues on this past week's episode of the podcast where we did a review of the first six issues of World Tree. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. The series is absolutely amazing. And here's issue number seven. 
You, you talked about all the nudity in it, so now I got to look at it. Holy smokes, every page. <laughs> and issue number eight, the latest issue. So I will be reading these tomorrow, too. That's why you need to read Gun Honey. That's why you need to read Gun Honey. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Uh, what were you saying, Sal? Is it out in trade yet? Uh, the first five issues are in uh, trade right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, keep an eye out for this because you will be seeing this later again in tonight's episode. Uh, this is the store exclusive, the Nirvana Comics store exclusive for Feral, number one. And uh, we will be doing a giveaway throughout the entire month of April for this book. So take a look at this. Oh, that's a cover. Man. Is like that. that not cool? I love nice. the fangs. Oh, yeah. And if you know what this is an homage of, yeah, ladies I was gonna and gentlemen. Say for, uh, well, do you know? You guys? It's, it's a movie, right? Movie yeah. Comes. Yeah. Dan, well, do you know? Yeah, I know. It's. um. Um, don't type, I'm, don't look it up. No, I'm blanking on the, I'm blanking <laughs> on the name of it now. It's, it, it's, uh, was Fright it a Night. vampire movie? Yes. Fright Night. Fright Night. There it yeah. is. Fright I, yeah, Night. I, was just, I, was, I was blanking on it for a second. That was my gut. I was thinking Fright Night. Because there's yeah, the beautiful. original and the remake. Yeah. Beautiful homage <laughs> to uh, Fright Night from the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around because uh, after we get done with polls, I will tell you how you can enter in to win a copy of that, that's that's a beautiful and fright night another movie i saw in the theater first run because you sal probably did too sal sal's old enough to have seen that in the yep, movies i did Sal's not much older than me sal is sal is just okay. four years um yep four years apart no or five years you're 69 five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, maybe. Okay, yeah. So he's 10 years older than me. So there we go. He's born after the moon landing, though. I, I right. got, yeah. Yep. I got mileage on me, baby. Got mileage <laughs> on me. Here's a series I haven't read yet, uh, but I'm getting it. I'm going to read it. It's just I'm reading other cool stuff first. And this is equally as cool. I just haven't gotten to it. Uh, Vengeance of the Moon Knight, number three. Nice. I love the cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous cover. Uh, I got this based on cover alone because of the Greg Capullo cover. Uh, Sal, you showed this last week, but uh, my copy of Web yep. of Spider-Man. Yeah, I like that cover. Beautiful. I do. Yeah, cool cover. I do too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, got the facsimile of Amazing Spider-Man 254. Nice. Black costume. No. Black costume. Exactly. I love it. Snoopy yeah. JB. Right. Yeah. I saw it when on his first run, Roddy McDowell rules. Absolutely. Uh, so I, that's, that's I really Snoopy's my buddy. That's one of my best friends, old Snoopy. There, nice. I, uh, I really enjoyed the remake of it too. I thought I the remake was actually yet. really good. I, I, did, I didn't see that either. It's this... got, um, oh, sorry, I was gonna nope, say, go it's ahead. Got, um, uh, I forget his name now. I'm blanking on it. He played Chekhov in the Star Trek movies, Walter you know, Cohen. No, the, uh, the new ones, the later ones. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh well, that was. Shoot. Like he was him. killed. He was yeah, killed he, by his vehicle. He Brought played him. Odd Thomas too. I can't. Yeah. Remember oh, that was name. a good movie. But yeah, he he played he played the kid in Fright Night, and um, Colin Farrell played the vampire. There you go. The lead the lead female in the original was Al Bundy's neighbor. That he could yeah was, yeah Marcy. oh yeah wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Black Cat and Jackpot number one. And, this is the Hildebrand yes. cover. Sorry. Anton, uh, Anton uh, Yelchin. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's that's a great cover. I cannot bring myself to buy that book. I just I, I got it for the cover. I know for the oh, cover that's only. Fantastic. Yeah. But that 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 concept of jackpot just drives. Oh, me I'm not going to read it. I'm yeah. I'm just going to look <laughs> but, at it. But, but that's a great cover. Yeah, the, they had a the Virgin variant at Nirvana, and I almost picked that up. Until I saw the price, and then I was like, "Why? I will wait." Uh, Gary, this though is uh, one I'm excited to read. This is on the top of my reading pile. Incredible Hulk number ten. Oh yeah, I haven't yeah. read this yet either. It yeah. looks great. The covers look great. Oh. Yes, now, issue nine, I will agree with you that the art style was was different, but it wasn't yeah. as big of a change as to separate me completely. Uh, and I, I think that uh, the style that the current artist is right now, who is it, Hurls? 
or Wilson, one of the two, I don't know. But uh, his his work right now, I think, is fitting for this. And mm-hmm. I love that uh, the main artist from the previous couple issues uh, is still doing the covers. Yes. Yeah, but, and the stories that. have been so good. So amazing. The, the, it's, Kenny Johnson, great. It's Marvel yeah. horror, and they're doing a really good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. This cover, I'm not too happy with. I think John Romita Jr. has done better work. Uh, and every time I get to praise in him, then he does something like this, and I have to pull it back just a little. Oh, yeah. uh, Daredevil number seven. Yeah. That's such a terrible. Me and Sal were talking about that at the shop. Yeah. I was like, look at this shit. This yeah. is so bad. And was it two weeks ago that I really liked his Spider-Man cover? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this, come on. Like, you talking right. about phoning it in. Yeah, this is my book of the week right here. Uh, I did read this week. also, and uh, this is Ultimate Spider-Man number three. Absolutely nice. fantastic. I'm not Very ready. happy with this. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, look at that. That's a bullseye. Oh, oh nice. yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, so it's good, guys. It's absolutely good. All right, that's Wait. all. Do what? Just made just a noise uh, announced another ultimate series, the ultimates. Oh yeah, and I'm excited about that too. Absolutely. All right, that's all I got for polls. Sal, since you were fashionably late, you will be fashionably second. What do you got this week? All right, let's start off with independent. Thanks to Dan, I got lo- the latest local man, Bad, Bad Girls. Girls. Hello. Yep. So that was my only independent. Moving on to DC, I picked. Up I love that show, arrow very way. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Wow. I picked up the Green Arrow variant to that. That's that cool. cool. And it reminds okay. me, they posted a, an image of the um, Nightwing cover, cover coming out in like next month or this month. That's that same kind of thing where it's like motion through a bunch of different boxes. Wow. Yeah. All right. So Detective <laughs> Comics 1083. Is that nice storyline cool. still going on? Yes. Yes. I have stopped so. reading Detective. I'm beyond over it at this point. <laughs> I don't normally pick up X Force, but I picked up X Force 50 because I wanted to see what happened with the Beast. And, and I the was the last copy that the, our, our store had. Yep. And I was severely disappointed in this complete issue. Wow. It Not was good. It was it was let down. It was let Uh-oh. down. I was expecting something. Did, did Beast say I have been and always will be an Avenger first and X Man second? No. Mm. He, no he's very, he, he's, he's very disappointed computer. because where the Beast went to live when it was all over. At Wonder Man's house. For moving, yes. For moving on. That's exactly, it's exactly where he Wonder went. The, not an X uh, I'm sorry, an Avengers house. He went to Wonder Man's house. That's great. That's not his best Avengers friend. Man. That's his best friend. Best that's friend. That's not Avengers Mansion. That's not Avengers Mansion. No, because that's that's home to him. Avengers Mansion is home, as we have no, no, shown no. on he this program. To... Honey, I'm home. Yeah, Avengers I... Mansion is home. That's right, TJ. Avengers are so the walls are crumbling, Sam. The beast is in the front of the damn line. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, the, you know the term gaslighting? Because that's what Gary's doing. He's <laughs> gaslighting everybody right now. All right, moving on. But so, yeah, he's, you know, in, yeah, in, the, in the house, they, right. have, uh, they have bunk beds that they're going to be sharing. That's, that's right. right. They probably are. They probably the, are. The, and, 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 and Snoop will, will attest to this, that uh, the Beast and Wonder Man are Marvel's equivalent of Booster and uh, Beetle. There you go. Yeah. That's right. I, I to- and I totally agree with that. I have no problem yep. with that. Yep. Both, Absolutely. Both not non Avengers hanging out, having a good time. Well, both <laughs> members of the preeminent super team of the company that uh, that they are uh, written by. You know, yeah. both Wonder Man and the Beast are Avengers, and um, Beetle and Booster were Justice Leaguers. So, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right, Sal. I agree 100%. Okay, there we go. Thank you very All much. All right, Sal, what do you got? I didn't Superior know Wonder Spider-Man. Man was Defenders. Yeah. <laughs> Defenders. Yeah, Superior, Superior Spider-Man number five. Wow. And there's a really cool ad for Deadpool Wolverine. Oh, ad yeah. on the back. You know, they're so. pushing those characters for the movie that's coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. I know they are. I, too, have oh, an incredible for the Superman movie to come out. Yeah. I did pick that up, so Love I haven't it. read that yet. I picked up uh, Edge of the Spider-Verse Spooky Man. 
Uh, that's supposed to be a first appearance too, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All I'm those Spider Verse right. ones are first appearances yep. now. Oh well, Pretty I'm much. not reading it, so I have no idea. Saber Tooth War Part Six Wolverine Number Forty Six still going. Mm -hmm. I think it's twelve parts. Yeah. Wow, yeah. a whole year of gore and Wolverine. That's well, wild. it was just one big part. And Wolverine got his claws out and sliced it up, and it's twelve now. Yep, that's true. <laughs> well, it, well, it comes out twice a month, so oh, yeah, it, right on. Whole yeah. year, but, right. Yeah. Rise of the Powers of X number three. Yeah. Oh the, wow. The look on her face. Uh, what? 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 Why are you trying to kill me? What? What did I do? Okay. Next up is. X Men number one. Let me let's just zoom in on a character right oh, there. Wow. Yeah, uh, they, Jubilee they, X Men yeah, number one, and the Beast X, is there. You know, X Men. He's doing his service. He got drafted again. It's not where oh. he wants to be. He's, Man, you know, he feels good. like he's got to do it. Yep. Very cool. Love the cartoon, by the way. Dan and I we're going to get together and review the episode three. Episode uh, three was soon. amazing. Let me put that out there right now. Yeah. They yeah, they, they did amazing. a lot in thirty three minutes. They did. They pushed. I think they pushed too much in thirty three minutes. Yeah. But yeah, but we've got the rest it. of the season. So amazing Spider Man number forty six, and this Ooh. is another cover I hate because I just I hate the way Electro is drawn. He looks he looks like he looks like he's just he's ah. very happy. He's, he's very happy. Out. It looks like he's not even looking at Spider Man. Like he's, he's looking at straight he's just, up, like, looking straight up, and then shooting off to the side. Like I know. know. I hate him. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. He's like doing a no look pass in the NBA. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Exactly. The no look <laughs> there you pass. Go. That's what it is. He's and like Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to throw it to Kelsey over this way. Oh that's God. true. <laughs> the number one issue that came out this week is the hottest issue. It's the greatest issue of all time. It's Jeff Cott and Black Cat foil Ugh. version. Oh. Foily goodness. Pass. You bought the issue. Uh, I bought, bought the Hildebrandt the cover. That's what I bought. I paid for the so, first cover. So Electra has the best head. worst mask in comics. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, What's good I can agree with that. <laughs> Let's go with Is that all you got, Sal? That's all I got. My HCC pool will be next week, and that will be tons of variants for what you just saw today. All right. Fantastic. Uncle Gary, the floor is yours. What do you got tonight, sir, for pools the flower. of the week? The flower, the flower is yours. Okay. Let's, let's go with the book that got me for, goddamn five different covers. Uh-oh. Power Girl. Power Girl. Power Medieval Girl. Mayhem. Yep. Let's count the boobs, ladies and gentlemen. Let's count the breasts. Here you wow. bend over. Yep. You bend over. Let's go. That's a great cover, oh, though. She's jumping up and down now. I like that. Cover. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a cover. A Jay Lee cover. Not a Jay Lee fan. But you know what? It's very stylized, but I, I enjoy I enjoy Jay Lee's covers. So, uh, you know, he, he's probably that's probably one artist that's very stylized that I enjoy more than most. Electro's real mask sure beats that MCU hoodie. Wow. There you go. Yeah, I agree that with that. Cover. That Power Girl cover beats everything else. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to bend over? Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Wanted to turn around? Oh, not so good. Oh, not right. so good, yeah. All right. And again, we did this before. Whose art is this? Oh, oh God. That's the, uh, the one that just passed away. Lady no, from Aquaman. Ramon Afraid. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, again, this is just classic comic art goodness. Miss Ramona Fraden, rest in peace. You were a yes. two, true trailblazer. So every time I get one of these covers, you can bet your ass I'm going to showcase it and wow. thank Ramona Fraden for all the great work she did. Absolutely. Comics. Yeah. Yep. Um, Detective Comics. And you know what? I know, um, you know, you had to jump off the ship, but it's, 1,083, yeah. and after yeah. my purchases last week, my detective run is from 269 up, so I am not Jeez. losing detective. That's right. <laughs> that's, that dates, that's right, it's at 69, and that dates from 1959. Wow. Yes. All, right. All right, Penguin, I am loving this book. I heard it was good. This book is great. Right. Penguin. What yeah. issue is that? Eight, eight, yep. 
Harley. Harley, Harley the A cover, but the B cover is a lot of fun, especially if you like Rachel Dotson and oh, Roll wow. like that cover. Perry Dotson. You know, you like the Dotsons, Derby. Yep. If you like the Dotsons and Roller Derby, this is your cover. All right. Also got me some green archer. Yeah. There, there you go. The there Emerald go. Archer. The Emerald Archer. Yeah. Got me some flash, and I know it's um, left for dead. Left for dead. You know this book. I'm like, I'm like Dan is on this book. It's not the greatest, but I'm not stopping my flash run. You're um, just waiting for it to finish. Yep, Green Ooh. Green Lantern, the Alan Scott one, and I got a sweet alternate cover for that. That's cool. That's mm -hmm. nice. There's yep. a Red Lantern cover too that I got coming. Yeah, There's that that was Lantern pretty cool. Look like Almost, that. Almost picked that up. Raven the Bold. Say that again, Dan. What'd you say? The for the Green Lantern alternate that you held up, does the Red Lantern one kind of like match that one? I don't think so. No. No, no I haven't it's... seen the Red Lantern one. No. Yeah. I'll do okay. see it next week when I get it from uh, yep. CPD. All right. Yep, there's the new Raven the Bold. Yeah, Batman's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna break the break the police line. And for a trade for DC. JLA eight, JLA. <laughs> so Four this apes. was a lot of fun, and this was, I guess, it was in the nineties. Yeah. All the annuals of of the JLA main characters, they had transformations where they turned into apes. So wow, you know, I love the Aquaman orangutan. He's got the hook. He's got the hook oh. that Aquaman had at the time. The complete collection. Yeah, and that was the, and that was when they had the uh, the alternate Flash. The yes, alternate Wally. They yes. had that cool costume, the red with the um with the silver, the silver lightning bolt on the side. Yeah. I always thought that they missed a they missed a great opportunity with him because remember at, you know when they, they brought the regular Wally back and he leaves and he's like, I'm gonna go into the multiverse and try and find my world. I always thought they missed a great opportunity to do a book with him that was just him traveling around the multiverse trying to find his way home. Oh wow. That could have been a very good book because of y'all's recommendation. Duke, I've been reading Duke. Are you liking I, it so far? Yeah, I'm liking it, and I don't have the G.I. Joe knowledge that y'all have, so they're introducing the characters enough where I know them and all. Nice. A book that I know I'm the only one here reading, but I like crime stuff, New Burn. Been Ooh. so good. Oh, man, I love it. Yeah, New Burn's a former cop that ended up leaving the force and became a fixer for the mob. Um for all the families, he would settle disputes between the families. Wow. So, so pretty I read it when it came out, I read the first few issues and I just ended up, you know, ended up like, all right, I got to cut back on books. The art, the art isn't my favorite, <laughs> but I love the story. I love the crime stuff. So I am Thanks. on board. It's uh, Zdorsky on it. Oh, um, uh, Gary, real quick, back to JL8. Yeah. Richard asks, is Gorilla Grodd a human in that story? I don't believe so, but you know what? It's been a lot of years since I read that, but I don't I don't believe Grodd was a human in that. Yeah, it's but, been a uh, while since I've read it too, so I have no idea. Let, 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 let's, let's look at the... Let's see what it says. Uh, okay, this is fun. From the publisher that brought you Detective Chimp, Gorilla Grodd, Monsieur Mala, Titana, Beppo, and a whole slew of super primates come the greatest ape extravaganza adventure of all time. Uh, but the, let's see what it says about Grodd. Well, here, I'll do due diligence nope. on that nope. while you're showing the rest yeah, of your I don't, books. And I'll yeah, I don't, see, I don't see any. I don't see, there is a reference to Gorilla City, but I don't know that Grodd was human. And my last independent was is this Zorro book that I'm really looking, liking. That's right. You were talking about and, that the last time I was on. Yeah, Sean G Gordon Murphy. And the issue of Zorro on the motorcycle is still probably my favorite cover of the year. So that's wow. by um, Romeo. And the last back issue I have, I mean, I'm sorry, not back issue. The last independent is this wonderful magazine from Tomorrow's Publishing. So Ooh. this is a Batman issue. And it's done in the you know the format of the hundred pagers of oh, the seventies that I'm so nostalgic for. That's and nice. this is um, Batman of the seventies. You get Bob Brown, Giordano, Frank Robinson, Simonson, Alex Toth, Bernie Wrightson, Irv Novick. There's some Aparo 
stuff in here. So it's just great. It's this is just a great God. If, if and if none of you, this detective comics that's shown here is one of the greatest Batman stories of all time. This wow. is what um, debuted Leslie Tompkins taking care of the young Bruce Wayne after the parents were murdered. There's no hope in crime alley is a story. Oh my gosh. What a great, great story written by um, Denny O'Neill. Uh, this delves into Batman, the cult a little I bit. Don't, I can't find anything as far as gorilla yeah. grod and JLA, yeah. but uh, we'll get you answers later. Yeah. And if y'all haven't read it, Batman, the cult is one of the greatest Batman stories. Uh, I have the ever. first issue. Uh, written by Jim Starlin signed. I mean, um, art by Bernie Wrightson. Wow. I have a copy of the trade signed by both those gentlemen. So that's, that's kind of great. Cool. That's very cool. Signed to me in person. Pam says and, 100 pager is pretty cool. Oh, the 100 pagers were so good in the time. And so they did that back issue magazine in the format. But Tomorrow's publishes back issue and Alter Ego. And they are great deep dives into comic history that I highly recommend. Nice. You know, if you get those. All right. So now we're going to move on to Marvel to finish this out. All right, <coughs> Ultimate Spider yeah. Three. All right, T Bolts. Right on, Doctor Doom. Mm -hmm. Old Doctor Doom action. Liking it. Oh, that amazing Spider Man. And, you I know. cannot wait for that to be done. And again, this is this is Legacy issue nine hundred and forty. And considering I have all nine hundred and forty, I'm not stopping. Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, Daredevil. You know, what's what's the Daredevil legacy? Snoopy but, says, remember when 100 pagers were just a dollar? That's right. That's right. Well, 100 pagers were 60 cents back in the day when, Chris, you're a little younger than me, so uh, maybe you don't, <laughs> you don't remember when they were 60 cents. Yeah, more of a taggart wondering, why are they going to kill me? What did I do? Yeah. <laughs> You have no idea how bad naughty you've been on your other yeah. <laughs> lives. The naughty. <laughs> she needs to be spanked. I'm just a guy to spank her. All right, here we go. Incredible <laughs> Hulk. Great cover. Yes. You know as good as that cover is, you know another one? How about that oh, transformation oh, cover? Nice. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Isn't that, isn't that great? That is cool. That That is a great transformation cover. Love it. That's like straight out of a horror book. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what it is. It's a horror book. All right. Yep. Wolverine, this violent <laughs> book, and we're going to cap it off with X Force. And unlike, unlike Sal, I'm not as disappointed in this because we got rid of at least for now this awful, awful beast. Did we? A, did we? I think. Well, maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. But he at least did. He did an act that was kind of selfless in the end to save his best friend. Yeah. So he, he did. And his best friend. But the fallacy is his best friend couldn't have died because he's energy that's just going to reform eventually. Mm -hmm. Right. But, right. but he still did that. But here's what's really cool. Yeah, baby. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, that's great. The, it looks like some George Perez goodness. Yeah. That is George Perez incentive variant oh. with the with – the, um, with the beast and his best friend wonder man and he has a he has a button on that says mr muscles fan club any idea what that is mr. Muscles no. fan club. isn't that okay. uh isn't that wonder man's like uh i don't know it's his first I'm acting disgusting. job on a local yeah. kids show and sal i'm surprised you know this because this was back in the time where the Beast was an Avenger, and he was hanging out at Avengers Mansion, and Wonder Man, uh, and he had the show on, and Wonder Man tried to get him to change the channel. He goes, no, this is crazy. I love this stupid show. And then they introduced Mr. Muscles, who was Simon, and it was That's great it. comedic thought, yep. relief. And so he's got the Mr. Muscles <laughs> fan club on there. Yep. So, and, and you know what? Perez, God damn, what a loss, right? Yeah, yeah. I know. What, what, what a freaking awesome. loss. And did, did any of you fellas have a chance to meet him? I did. No. Okay. I we met him in Chicago and uh, had my whole family with me at the time when I was married. And George Perez was such a treasure that, uh, like, my kids were little at that yeah. time. Like, Ethan was still in a stroller little. And uh, George Perez took the time 
to talk to each kid, uh, my two stepkids at the time and my two kids, each kid individually and really get involved with them and made them feel so warm and welcome. And, and it was wonderful. Talk to me and my wife at the time. And it was a, an experience I will never forget. You know what? He is one of the, he is just about the greatest class act there is yeah. that I've met in comics. And in, indicative of this is you look, and I have pictures of him. Um, Mike, my best friend, has pictures of him. You look at the pictures we have of him. In every picture that he that's with us or with anybody else, he not only does he have his arm around you, he's leaning his head into you. Yeah. Which just he's putting his he's just leaning into you. And that's a little subtle thing, but that's that's the kind of guy he is, though. He's leaning into you. And he he embraced the fans and he wanted to Oh yeah. You know, he just wanted to, you know, on that last tour around the tours, that's when I saw him on his last tour where he was going around. We drove to New Jersey to see him and we had to wait four and a half hours to see him. Wow. And you know what? It was worth it. It was worth every second of waiting. And he did not rush you through. He nope. spent time with everybody and signed a bunch of things. And he was just, you know, he's just as good as it gets in the comic wow. field. So my my life has been enriched by meeting that guy. Oh, yeah. So, nice, by meeting nice. that, that true, total gentleman. And, Tim, I'm glad you had the same experience meeting him. That was the same day that I met uh, Stan Lee, too. I've told that oh, story right. on here a million times. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. George Perez was and always will be uh, the nicest person in this industry I have ever met. I, you know what? I, I can't, I can't dispute that at all. Yeah. So not at all. So that's, those are my weekly polls. And we, you know, right. we, we finished with beast as an Avenger for Sal. Right. Perfect. Uh, we were wrong, Sal. We were wrong. I saw when I, when we were at the shop uh, yep. yesterday, I saw a, a I saw a trade that came out and I pointed to on the rack and I, I just, oh, just kind of nodded my head to the rack. I was like, which one of those you bet Gary got? And as soon as Sal looked at it, he's like, that one. And I'm shocked that you did not buy the Wonder Man trade that came out. I did. Oh. Oh, actually. Oh. <laughs> and, and, um, back up what Snoop just said, Perez was a generation. Oh. I do. The Wonder Man trade is um, in my box. And you know why I didn't buy the Wonder Man trade? I didn't buy it because I wanted to be able to do the Wonder Man, Avenger, Beast thing, right? And next week, I get to bring it up again because I'll have the Wonder Man trade. So <laughs> I did this for pacing. So every week, I get to, you know, I, I get to get a dig in a Wonder Man, Avengers, Beast, and all that. So I didn't want to have it all in one week. Pacing, e pacing, pacing. EJ, hold on to that question, buddy. Let us get through polls first. And in between polls and back issues, we will definitely. Oh, I, yeah, that's it. I got that answer for you, baby. TJ, uh, I got the answer on that one. It, well, I, say, I know that, uh, I know, you know, flipping, seeing what was in the Wonder Man book, I know that it's got the um, Wonder Man Beast Avengers 2 miniseries. The, what, what two? Avengers what two? 2. Oh, the title was Wonder Man Beast. Avengers 2? Well, it wasn't Avengers 2, Wonder Man and Avenger. It was Avengers 2? Oh, my God, Sal. It's wonderful. Sal. It's we all know that Dan's uh, smoking some doobage. That's <laughs> not possible. <laughs> uh, Dan, if you're smoking the devil's lettuce, buddy, let me know before <laughs> class starts. and uh, we'll... So you can take it away from him and make sure. It's, it's smoking himself. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so you can I still live in an illegal state, ladies and gentlemen. So no, I do not partake in the devil's lettuce. Say, Nor yeah, do I. Like, take it away. Tim's like puff, puff, give. <laughs> puff, puff, give. Puff, puff, pass. If you got a story to tell, pass along. Let's go. <laughs> we ain't got time to let that burn. All right. So I got. Uh, I'll start off. I got my DC stuff. Uh, Detective Ten Eighty Three. Yeah. And the yeah, covers I'm, are great. I love the covers. Yeah, the covers are good. I'm. It's just it's such a tedious storyline at this point. I actually sat down and started reading this and got a few pages in, and I was just like, God, I just set it down. Like I'll come back to it. Like I'm not a fan of you know the Batman with like the metaphysical stuff and the mystical stuff and all that. Like I don't like. I like seeing Batman be street level and you know yeah. crime and and detective stuff and. I'm just not digging this run. I just I can't wait for it to end. 
I can't wait for this storyline to end because it's been dragging on for so long. I just want it to be over. Don't bogart it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and then speaking of that too, you know, Flash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there another you go. one. I just. Uh, I, I just am not enjoying the storyline so far, and it's getting to the point. It's getting to the point more so with Flash than Detective. It's getting to the point where, where kind of with both of them, too. Like, I'm, I'm kind of debating, like, how long am I going to keep picking this up? And I'm just not. Yeah. not You're not enjoying it. it. Yeah, I'm just I'm not having fun with it. It's just they're getting to be kind of a tedious read. And, you know. But something that's not is Green Arrow 10, which has been fantastic so, yeah. so far. What a segue. God, yeah. I just, we just, that was just like smooth. Yeah. Sliding <laughs> in. Smooth like butter. And I'm really looking forward to reading this because I've been loving that series. Uh, I also got the Alan Scott Green Lantern number five. Nice. Mm-hmm. Which I love. There are some things in this series that I'm, I'm not a fan of. Like they've done a lot of retconning for – for Alan Scott's, you know, his history and, mm-hmm. yeah. and you know, because Same. they were, because they came out, you know, a couple of years ago and said that he was gay, whatever, I don't care. But they're doing a lot of retconning to fit that into his continuity. And some of it just doesn't really make a lot of sense with me. But this issue, I think, is the best of the series so far. Nice. And I got to ask you guys that are reading it, too. How are you? How are you putting these in your collection? Because initially I have, you know, I've got my JSA stuff and then I've got in the box and then the JSA adjacent stuff like All-Star Squadron and and um, Stargirl. And then I've got all these in there. But I was thinking like, well, I should have the Wesley Dodd Sandman stuff with the Sandman Mystery Theater. And I should probably have the Green Lantern stuff with all the Green Lantern books. And I should have the Jay Garrick Flash one with all the Flash books. So now I'm... Now I'm debating on on how to have that stored and organized. JSA, I put it with yeah. JSA. Uh, on to uh, yeah, I'll probably keep it there, but I don't know. I'll probably also move it three times before you, I. You could it. you could also just put it in a box of JSA miniseries. There you go. Yeah, I, I, it's all in a long box right now. But when I whenever the long box gets filled and I. You know, or too full, and I have to move stuff out. That's probably what I'll do like, move them and do a short box or something. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, you know, for my indies, like Sal said, I got them in this series Local Man. Nice. And this is Bad Girl. There's a one shot Bad Girls. Um, I just keep saying, man, if you like, if you're nostalgic for 90s image, original 90s image, and you also like a really cool, you know, crime store you know small town crime you know conspiracy type story this is such it's local man is such a great book it's such a fun read and it's issue 10 that's coming out next so it's not like there's a whole lot if you want to go pick them up they're not you know you can get them all for cover price it's been nine issues and then two one shots this is one of them i love the retro image thing they're doing with that too yeah, it's fantastic. Like everything about it is retro image, and I love it. And they and they mention, you know, they mention old, you know, old image characters too. And some of them pop up in here, like they did a one shot where the design of it was like, um, was like, um, um, Deathmate, mm-hmm. and they had, um, they had like all these old image characters popping up. Like Striker was there, and a few others. It was really cool. Nice. Um, like Tim, I haven't been reading this series, but I also picked it up the blank sketch cover for Conan the Barbarian. Oh, so good. So well, good. Well, I got it because when I was doing the Kickstarter, somebody wanted me to um do a Conan sketch cover, and I was like, All right, you know, I'll I'll request it. So I put it in to order. Kickstarter didn't go through. But now I still have the blank sketch cover, so I guess I'll draw something on it. I obviously Conan I'll draw on it. I'm just not really sure what now because you know the person was gonna get it for the Kickstarter. It didn't happen, so whatever. I'll have uh, it. I will it take eventually. it, Dan. I will take it. I will give you some healthy ideas for Conan. All right. 
And, and I also, some unhealthy ones, too. <laughs> and some unhealthy ones, yes. Uh, and, like, you guys also got Duke, which yeah. was awesome. One issue left to go on that, a couple more for Cobra Commander. Then they're having a mini series for Scarlet, and they're having a mini series for uh, Destro. Yes, got both of those on my polls ready to go. Me too. And it's making me think, like, what other Joe and Cobra characters would would be cool to see uh, have their own mini series. Yeah. I would personally like to see them do one with um, Snake Eyes, Stalker, Storm Shadow. Uh, the guy, oh, I'm sure they're coming. The guy that be, you know that ended up becoming one of the Freds. I want to see them do a mini series of them in the military together before all of the GI Joe stuff. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, on to Marvel. I got also got Incredible Hulk. Mm -hmm. Love Great that cover, cover, but the yeah. artwork inside is you not know, the cover. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's this new guy, Danny Earls. I hope that he, you know, is done after the storyline is done because I'm just not digging that art. I agree. I wanted to go back to the original artist and continue through as much of this run as possible. Yeah, and if you see the the stuff on Danny Earls' Twitter page when he gave his, you know, like two years ago, a year or two ago, when he gave his um portfolio to gail simone and he ended up, you know she ended up like recommending me he's getting all this work like this stuff his pages in his portfolio are so good this this like batman story that he you know mm -hmm. short story that he did with against mr freeze and the pages are absolutely gorgeous they're stunning and then you look at this stuff and you're like Maybe he's doing the amount that Marvel is paying him to do. You pay me this much, this is the quality you get. I have Maybe. a feeling it's probably more like, hey, I have these sample pages that I can spend as much time as I want working on. Yeah. Oh, now I'm on a deadline and it's yeah. done. Oh, TJ, there you go. Someone else is interested in Conan. It has now become a bidding war, Dan. <laughs> I got uh, Superior Spider-Man number five. Right on. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be boring now. It's like all the same books that you guys got. That's Close all right. Number three. Right. We'll, I see love how many we'll see how many printings of this they do because I've been buying every print of every issue to come out. I'm not going to miss the train on this like I have in the past. I love the fact that we are all reading a lot of the same stuff. It, I, I dig that. And I also put in a request to get this, the blank sketch cover that's coming out for Ultimate Spider-Man 2. Nice. nice. Cool. So, Wolverine 46. Really looking forward to reading this one. There we go. Yeah. Oh, my. Because the tease at the end of the last issue tease like a, you know, a Team X type of thing. Uh, yeah. Also, X-Men 97. Oh, there's the Beast. With Jubilee on the cover. That's a cartoon. That's not a comic. <laughs> that's a comic. Alternate <laughs> universe. Elvin. That's based that on a, a comic that, based on a cartoon. Where now Beast that's a, was an X Men based on a cartoon based on a comic. <laughs> that's a comic a, based on a cartoon based on a comic. There you go. DNA that did the cover, right? We're, yeah. uh, no, this is Todd Knox. Yeah, Ooh, nice. but DNA did do a cover, I think. Yeah, did quite I, a few I, I of think, them. Yeah, for yeah, for ninety seven, I believe. The um. I, I mean, the artwork inside's okay. It's kind of cartoony, but it's not you know terribly bad. Um, I, well, I went, it I is based Todd off Nock a doing, cartoon. So. Yeah, I wish Todd Nock was doing the interiors too, but I know he's doing those upcoming issues of Spider Man, which I'm going to pick up just because he's doing it. Nice. Uh, I also got Daredevil Seven, which the the issue was awesome. The cover is absolutely terrible. It is not good. It's, it's not. It's it's just not not a good cover. It's, that is not a modern art masterpiece. No, no, this is not. It's not a candidate for slapping. No, no. That will be More. on the year. That will be on the year end cover of the year show. There you go. Yeah. You know when we do the Codex Awards, we'll have to do like the um what the very things. That'll be yeah. the worst cover. And then I got this. Uh, I had lent Sal some. Um, I lent Sal that Manhunter book, the collected volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was nice. Gary, I lent him that to, to read. The and, Paul Kirk Manhunter? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the one that they collected after mm -hmm. um, Goodwin died when they just had yep. like the silent final issue. Yeah. The collected one. So I lent that to Sal to read, who said he liked it. And then he gave me back that and the Spider Man sketch cover I did that I sent off to get uh, CGC graded. You, you bring that book, you bring that trade to um, 
um, Big Lick and get uh, Simonson to sign it. Oh, I didn't know he was going to be there. Him and Weasley will be there. Big Lick, yep. Oh, nice. I looked on the website. It only listed like one comic creator under guests. I'll have to check again. Okay, Maybe. yeah, no, they, they've they been listed for a while, yep. I might have looked in the wrong section, though. And but there's hey, also a Roanoke me. one. There's also a Roanoke one. Okay. And so there's the Big Lick in Roanoke, Big Lick here at Dulles. Maybe I looked at the wrong one. Yeah. But anyways, in the in the bag, he had this. He's like, I got a book in there. You, you'll see why when I gave it. You know, so he also gave me his, you know. This oh. one. Yep. Nice. nice. That's a great cover. And um, um, Sal, we got the Virgin variant of that coming for you. Or I've got it. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And that's why he gave me that one, he said, because he's getting the Virgin variant from me. <laughs> but still, I appreciate it because that's a fantastic cover that I mm-hmm. eh, stupidly did not pick up off the shelf, and the next week it was gone. Is that everything you have for this week, Dan, or you got yep. some more left over? Uh, nope, that's all That's all my new stuff. All right, ladies and okay. gentlemen, that was our pulls of the week. Hold Sal, on. I know you got that one image you want me to show. Yeah, I want to show you that because Dan yeah. was asking about this. Was there a solo Red Lantern book? Oh, there it that's is. awesome. Yeah. And I got that coming from HCC Look as well. That. So that's a cool when that, when that shipment comes, you guys will see it. That's yep. neat. Very good cover. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Sal on his YouTube page. Where would that be, Sal? So people can see where that cover is going to be showing. All right. Well, you can check it out on YouTube under Sal's Comic Corner and Instagram as the Slab Guy seventy seven. There you go. And Dan, for people to fight over that uh, sketch you're going to do of Conan, where can they find you? Um, I can be on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art, and I actually speak of sketch covers. I posted the um, the drawing I did for the Moon Knight one that I gave to you. That's uh, right, and I got that yeah. sitting right here. Ladies and gentlemen, it nice. sits on my desk in all its glory. Yeah. Very excited and very happy for that. The, for anyone that doesn't know, yeah, there's the the original. Look at that. Mm-hmm. So for anyone that doesn't good know, stuff. so good. Yeah, I've, I've said it before. I draw all the stuff on like Bristol board first because I erase a lot and I change stuff a lot before it's finalized. And that's not good for the paper that they print on these sketch no. covers. Because it, the, the the residue from the pencil will stay on there, so I draw everything first and get it the way I want it before I redraw it on the sketch cover. So I have like, so I have the, like I said, that one, and then the sketch cover that he has. So there's an original that goes with it all. So I didn't post the picture of the sketch cover today. I posted the picture of that. The sketch cover I will post later. All right, now, gentlemen, let's go back to. Something that TJ asked before we uh, finished polls. Let's go back to George Perez. Sal, we'll start with you. What was his best work in your opinion? Oh, gosh. But it's hard to pick one. It's hard to pick one. Where knife safety is always practiced. Always practiced. Absolutely. Well, oh. Top of your head, then. I mean, there's so many to choose. What What do you think is the pinnacle? He was. Uh, he did uh, JLA Avengers, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the one. Yeah, that's the one that's going right to my top of my head. Right there, like that. Right, yeah. exactly. JLA Avengers. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Yep. That's the cover I'm thinking of. That's the cover I'm thinking there of. There right you go. There. So I'm good. That's my. That's my yeah. phone background. Let me show you. Uh oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. That's wonderful. Okay, uh, I'll go next. I think um, JLA Avengers, I agree with you on that. The yep. the half that he did for Infinity Gauntlet is yeah. absolutely fantastic. But I think where he really, really shined was uh, for uh, multiple characters, Crisis on Infinite Earths, without a doubt. But uh, for, was, yeah, That was a very close second for me. But very for close. individual characters, uh, Wonder Woman. When he did Wonder Woman, I, I agree with that. I'll leave it there, Gary. Okay. What about you? There's only one correct answer. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the correct answer is JLA Avengers. This is his magnum opus, and um, he was going to do this in 1983, and mm-hmm. it got scuttled by Jim Shooter, and um, it did not happen. And these things are great wraparound covers, 
So yeah. I have two copies in each one of these so I can turn it around yeah. and see the see the wraparound. And this cover right here, 206 characters. Insane. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this That's wiped crazy. out his um wiped out his um um yep that's right chris um snoop this cover here i once had a trivia contest and i said in what um in the cover of jla avengers um um four what two iconic items in comic history does superman is superman holding and somebody wrote Lois Lane's breasts. <laughs> <laughs> no, which which was pretty funny. You gotta give. Them... I, I, I hope they got. A, I hope they got a second consolation prize. Yeah, I think they got a. Uh, they got. They got a half point for creativity. JLA but, uh, versus Avengers, Gary. You know, will always hold a special place in my heart because that's that right. Because your brother. The, yeah, one of yeah, the last absolutely. books that he ever bought, and I yeah. have that. And I'll you never... have that book, and that book will never leave your side. Yeah. So all right. The T T J. This is the correct answer. And who didn't answer? Somebody didn't answer yet. Was it Dan? Dan? Yep. Dan. We're waiting on Dan. What do you got? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pam, yeah. I, agree I with mean, you. I mean, you got to go J L A Avengers. He had he had a great run on J L A. Had a great run on Avengers. That you know that put him together, especially if you include the was it twenty something pages for the eighties one that he penciled. Mm -hmm. he yep. yep. Um, I mean, yeah. Like you said, he had so many great runs on. DC stuff and Marvel stuff and Wonder Woman and Teen Titans and you know I mean just everyone but yeah you know you know in in Crisis and you know Infinity Gauntlet but yeah it's got to be it's got to be JLA Avengers but if you want a nice obscure book he did a four issue mini series with hey Dan move forward just a hair so your camera can refocus on you there we go. <laughs> <laughs> He um, did a four-issue four miniseries with Peter David called, and I don't, I never know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm sure Gary knows what it is. Uh, uh, Saxon Violence. Saxon Violence. Saxon Violence. Saxon yeah. Violence. Saxon Violence. And if, if you want to see George Perez draw uncensored, beautiful, naked women and and loads of gratuitous violence, that's <laughs> for you. Okay, okay you now... George Perez had a little fetish thing that he enjoyed with his life, and that's fine. I I, I love that there was a, a fantasy con or something like that he would go to every year. And I know one year he was going to he was going to judge the naked something <laughs> pool party or something like that. A oh contest. Oh my god! So hey, George Perez, <laughs> you, can, you can. I have no problem with that, brother. That's but right. I, I have no I problem. Totally agree. All yeah, right. If you, if you want to see a book that you would not expect the two of these like big time mainstream guys to do, check out that book. It's a cool read too. It's an interesting story, but all right. Yeah. What's the name of it again, Dan? Saxon Violence. Saxon Violence. Yeah. Sax and violence. There but we go. But it's spelled S A C H S. H -S. And yeah. And then violence spelled V I O L E N S. Yep. There you go. And those all right. are the, of the two main characters in it. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into back issues, uh, if you remember, I showed you this in my weekly polls. Mm -hmm. Now yes. you have an opportunity to win this. Now through the month of April, so this last episode in the month of March that we're doing for After Dark, and all through April, uh, plus on every other live show that we do throughout the month. So that's the podcast and comic character of the week. You will have a chance to win this Nirvana store exclusive copy of Feral number one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's real simple. All you have to do is two things. Number one, you have to be subscribed to the Codex station right here on YouTube. That's number one. That's real easy. 99% of you are already there. The other 1%, just hit it, you're done. Number two, super simple, get your keyboard fingers ready because I want you to, if you want to enter in to do this, type in hashtag giveaway in chat right now and Sal will take your name down and we will do the drawing at the I end will. of the month. Yeah, you will. Get a pen, get a piece of paper, sure. So we'll give you, involved? I guess. So hashtag giveaway, if this is something that you're interested in, go ahead and do that right now. I'll give you guys a minute or two 
Tuesday. And if you don't win, Sal's responsible. There you go. They'll still be giving out the foot rubs for anybody that is <laughs> the consolation prizes are hundred mile radius. <laughs> the more corns, the better. There you go. Am the I bunions. allowed? Are we Time allowed to rub to the bunions? Sal, I'm writing them down. Oh, thank dude, I was writing them too. You write them down then. <laughs> <laughs> so now All if right. nobody wins, you blame Tim. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Anybody else uh, throughout the rest of the episode, if you want to type in hashtag giveaway, by all means, go ahead and do that. And you will be entered in to win. Pam Pam is entering in for the foot rubs. Hashtag foot rubs. Oh, so there you go. This copy of Feral number one, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Okay, there we go. Pam, I'm going to put you in just for foot rubs alone. (laughs) Pam, be careful. Foot rubs are a gateway drug. They're a gateway rub is what they are. Gateway rub. I saw what you did there. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's get into some back issues, some glorious back issues. Hashtag belly rub. Absolutely. That's my dogs every morning. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, also, Dan is letting me know we are at 75 comments in chat tonight. Let's go ahead and uh, get that up to 100. We've oh, done that yeah. once before, and go. I would love to see that happen again. There we go, Pam. All right. Let's get some back issue goodness going while you guys sit back, relax, and enjoy this. Because, as always... Is it a stack? I oh, my it. God. That's a stack. Oh, <laughs> yes. But first, I'm going to show you some traits. So... Take a peek at this. Got this for a dollar. That is a great trade. That's the first JSA trade. (coughs) Yeah. So good. Hey, Richard, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, He passed away over 11 years ago. Um, uh, It's a long story. Uh, I'm sure if you look on uh, older episodes of Codex, I talk about it. Uh, But uh, I'll talk about it again at some point. Yeah, but uh, he was a good man, real awesome, and that was one of the last books that I got from him was the JLA vs. Avengers. And we, yeah, it was great. Uh, this one I also got. I don't remember if I showed this one to you guys or not. Remind me if I did. No, no. I'm not. That's okay, yeah. so this is volume two then. Mm-hmm. It is. So Man, this this was such a great series. You guys are welcome. Thank you so much for getting me uh, into this. I'm absolutely mm-hmm. loving it. I've got the first 15 issues now, and I can't wait. Was it was it through uh, Wildcat that got you really? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it was. We I was a Wildcat show. I was yeah. talking to Wes about that today. It was because and that was of episode. Well, Snoop there is a huge JSA fan, and he has a he has most of the. Uh, Perfect. JSA appearances, including he's got All Star Comics six, I believe, wow. which was when Johnny Thunder joined the team. Perfect. And, uh, and I, I was say, the JSA series that's before Johns took over as the writer. Uh, he is. He was a contributor. I he, think. Yeah, but yeah. he wasn't the main writer. He was not no. the main writer. And Goyer, no. I think. Yeah, David yeah. Goyer. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this one I got too. Uh, I've got most of the single issues, but uh, I just wanted the collection because it's a beautiful story. Nice. Yep. That's a good one to have. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So there we go. Got some awesome trades. Uh, Once I finish the first volume of Nightfall, which I'm about halfway through, I'm going to get started on JSA. All right, here we go. So, Dan, these first ones are for you. Some of these are from McKay's. Others came in the mail, and even more came from other places that I can't remember. Uh, G.I. Joe Real American Hero Frontline. This is the original image run, issue number six. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, issue 17, awesome picture of Beachhead there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Snoopy says uh, it was Goyer and Johns jumped on board around issue six. Yeah, yeah. and they co wrote it for a while before Johns took over. Are you an advocate for Beachhead? Uh, sometimes I mean, day or night, it doesn't matter as long as I'd be a fan, as long as it's frothy, I guess. (laughs) Uh, Was that when when Tim Seeley was drawing the book? Uh, unknown. no, Johnson. Well, well, this is toward the end. No, you're right. 
It is Sealy, yeah. And this is issue 18, the last issue. This is the B cover. And this is also the uh, the B cover, too. So that. This one I got. Dan, you'll appreciate this. This is Chaos Quarterly. I think this is issue two. It's beat up, uh, but uh, I had to have it because it was awesome back then. It's still awesome now. And look at this beautiful painted artwork from 1995. Oh, oh yeah. The Lady yeah. Death. Yep, I've got that somewhere. Yeah. yeah. See, it's it's been well read. So, and I'm okay with that. Paid two dollars and fifty cents for it, uh, but yeah, I had to have it. Yeah, they were putting that that anthology book out when they started, you know, because at first it yeah. was just Evil Ernie, and then they were having the Lady Death miniseries, and then after a few years, they decided to like start expanding and to having a bunch of other different characters too. This is, like, uh, and I love McKay's stickers too because they just come right off. Yeah, like uh, this Purgatory is, and Cremator and Lady Death, Cremator, Purgatory, and Bedlam. Bedlam, yeah, that was another yeah. one. So there it is without the McKay sticker. Beautiful. Chaos yeah. had some crazy alternate covers that they had back in like they would oh, have yeah. like they would have these contests where they would make covers that would be you talk about one of one where the cover would be made of like actual leather or it would be made of actual gold and have yeah. real jewels in it. And like, Oh yeah. You know, stuff where they would like deliver, you know, like have a security guard deliver it to the winner of these contests. Like it was, <laughs> it was crazy the stuff that they were doing back then. I Dude. would love to see some of that stuff. I've seen some of the leather bound stuff, but uh, nothing more beyond that. Gary, what would you have? Oh, well, I was just going to say, TJ was talking about, be careful with the sand it get in places where it's irritating. But hey. <laughs> But listen, that's why you go to a naked beach, because then you don't have sand that get caught in anything. That's <laughs> true. Snoopy, is that factual, actual human flesh? Uh, <laughs> we need some We need some. Uh, some research done on that. If you could provide a link or something so we could check it out. You, Sal, you know, some due diligence, please. Uh, listen, I wouldn't put it past Chris to, uh, for the human flesh there. <laughs> All right, moving on while we figure out if Chaos did, in fact, use someone's skin to make a book. Uh, Aliens vs. Predator, issue number zero. Oh, nice. That looks cool. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Like that. And this that's is the, cool. the first run, so the first time Aliens and Predator ever went against each other. Looks absolutely fantastic. And this right here is the last issue I needed, along with that, to complete the run. So this is issue number two. Oh, that's cool. That's an ugly mother. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, 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 can, you can say it. We're we're an hour and a half in. Oh, we're an hour and a half in? Yeah, yeah. Like one ugly mother. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, do it, do it now. Kill me. Come on, do it. <laughs> here <laughs> is Chama. here is the fried pie variant for the Shadow and Batman team up. Oh, that's uh, cool. that is a great cover. That looks amazing. And I paid two dollars for that. Yeah, DC had a while there where they were doing some cool noir stuff with those yeah. old characters. They had mm -hmm. like a, a bat they had they had this cool book where it was a team up of Batman and Doc Savage and the Shat or not the Shadow um, the Well, Spirit. I mean they, they did series for a lot of those yeah. characters too. Yeah, so. yeah first Doc way, Savage, first Shadow. way it was called. Yeah. Justice Inc., you know, going yeah. pretty far back. The Avenger. The Avenger. Now, uh, you JSA fans, here's a good one for you. Paid two ninety nine for it, so cover price. Uh, this is Justice Society of America number two. Yep, Starman yeah. cover. Mm -hmm. nice, That's nice. the one they did the JSA series, and then they canceled it and like relaunched it a month later with yeah as justice society of america they had yeah. alex ross do those a bunch of those covers on jsa yep. and then when they relaunched it as justice society the first i forget like 10 issues or so he We're had all ross yeah. yeah all right satellite ears dan this is issue 207 of justice league of america that was oh, that's great good. that was a great three-part team up Yes. Love the floating heads. The too. floating heads were great. And the floating heads expressions changed every issue. That is why I picked this up, Gary, because you were yeah. talking about it. This is the 20th annual team up of the Justice Society and the Justice League. Also guest starring the All-Star Squad. Yes. 
Yep. My Lord. But it, it was three <laughs> issues. And like I said, the floating heads, the expressions yep. change every uh, every issue. I love it. That's I Perez it. drawing it all, baby. That's so yep. fantastic. Uh, and then we got, uh, this is issue 248 of Justice League of America. Love this cover. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Such a great cover. You're getting toward the end there. It only went to 261. If we ever do another Martian Manhunter episode, this will be on my uh, cover picks right here. It was funny. I was just thinking, like, man, I can't believe I missed that cover when we were doing the the Martian Manhunter character of the week episode. Now, here is – this is a uh, black and white variant uh, for Dark Knight's Metal. I think this is issue three. I could be wrong. It might be issue six, but I'm pretty confident it's, it's, it's issue three. Paid six bucks for it. Could not turn it down. It looked so effing cool. Take a look at that. Oh, that, cool. that is nice. That is wild. That is cool. Yeah. And then, uh, that is not a spider tick. That is, or, uh, yeah, spider crack. That's just something having to do with plastic. So. There you go. Beautiful. Great. Now, this cover is cool. This is for the recently finished Hawk Girl series, which I wish they would have continued. But this is a beautiful C cover variant for Hawk Girl number one. Oh, oh that's yeah. beautiful. That's that is nice. nice. I love that. Absolutely fantastic. That's getting that's not, that's not a Turner, but it reminds me of Turner. It does, doesn't it? That is, uh, who is yeah. that? Otto Schmidt. Yeah. And that is very Turner esque. Mm -hmm. absolutely uh next this is kind of a big one so with my uh 2024 goals uh this is the only annual i needed for superman batman this is annual number four nice that's a good one very cool yeah and i got it at a very reasonable price and sal this is minty fresh Mm. and you want to you want to tell everyone why it's significant Uh, Because it is early art germ artwork and also uh, one of the contested first appearances of Batman Beyond in the DCU. Oh, yeah. So I pay this book I've seen at times go upwards over a hundred bucks. I ended up getting it for 30. Nice. Yeah. So. Uh. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, this is just foily goodness. Could not pass it up. Uh, Wes and I were digging through McKay's. That stuff will be coming out within the coming weeks. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. But this is the Flash number 80. Super Chrome, Super Foil, Alan Davis. Oh, yep. nice. Cool cover. Right? Yeah, that's that? awesome. Love it. Uh, next we have, I already have a copy of this, but uh, I will pick up these uh, variants anytime I see them. This is Superman Unchained number five, and this is by Francis Manipal. Oh, yeah. that's great cool. cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's nice. gorgeous uh, variants. The old Fleischer. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I always like the logo with the black, the black background to it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I made it, yeah, it made it pop more for me. Of it. Anytime I see these Unchained variants, they are so underrated. Uh, I always mm. pick them up. Contested wasn't his first appearance in Hulk 180. You know, you're absolutely right, TJ. I am so sorry that I forgot that uh, Batman Beyond showed up in Hulk 180. All roads, he did. All roads lead to Hulk 180. That's <laughs> Six right. degrees of Hulk 180. Mm-hmm. Was, <laughs> that that Fleischer Superman logo, there was a cool live action appearance of it in the Superman and Lois show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in the first season when they, you know, um, something happened to Superman, like the, the episode was like telling his origin and it shows him when he first showed up as Superman and he's got that suit with the Fleischer logo and, and he saves some kid and the kid looks at him and like, it's, it's such a perfect scene. And the kid looks at him and he's like, cool suit. And he walks up and goes, thanks. My mom made it for me. And then he like flies off to help someone else. And Wow. All right, uh, moving right along. This was the last one I needed for the Batman One Bad Day stuff. Now I have all of them. This is uh, One Bad Day, Mister Freeze. Nice, it's a good book. Yeah, I haven't read it. This is the one I've been wanting to read. He's one mm-hmm. of my favorite Batman villains. Uh, next, uh, Catwoman number one didn't have. I had a variant, but I did not have the A cover, so I got that. Joel Jones. Thoroughly enjoy her stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Issue number two. 
And cool. we got issue number 28. Very so, good. There we go. Now, got some Excalibur stuff for my 2024 collecting goals. Uh, Excalibur number 41. I love uh, Shadowcat and Wolverine down there. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Absolutely love it. And Nightcrawler kicking the snot out of Marvel Girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, X Factor number 48. Nice. Yeah. That's a cool cover. Uh, then I got the only two annuals for the entire run. So now I have all the annuals for that. Annual number one, first appearance of chaos. Total, total chaos. Never see him again after that. I think the oh, only yeah. character that you've seen when that year Marvel, I think it was 97, when they had a new character appear in every annual, I think the only one you ever saw again was Executioner, and he was in an episode of X-Men 97. No, they had um, Adam X appeared again. Did they? Yeah, he was in, because um, it turned out that he was, uh, they when they did an X-Men series, X-Men Legends, like a year or, or two ago, um, mm -hmm. it was revealed that he was kind of, sort of, another Summers brother. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, Excalibur Annual number two. Nice. And you got Psylocke there and uh, Nightcrawler down there and Shadowcat. And I think that's Captain Britain. I'm unsure. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that was a pretty awful costume they gave yeah, him. But terrible. Yes. Uh, moving right along into X Force. This has a stain on the word force, but I think it can be removed. But the cover itself, this is one of the few times you'll hear me say that Liefeld did an awesome cover. Uh oh. Uh, right there. Uh, yeah, I like that. It's great cover. Did, um, for, but, but I was just for Excalibur, do you have the um they weren't part of the 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 run of it, but there was like a short like the, graphic novel. The specials. There was like a short graphic novel that was like a thin one that came out right before the series. I think launched. so. I and think there, so. And there was you know the oversized the Marvel graphic novels. There was one that came out for them called No, Weird I don't World, have that. Weird World Three. No. Nope, not yet. Uh, it's on my up. list, though. Do what? I said you could pick it up pretty cheap. I don't think yeah. it's more pricey. This one I got pretty cheap, and this is beautiful Simonson work. This, I think, is one of my favorite covers now, and this is X-Factor number 13. Oh, that's so good. That is yeah. good. I love that's that a great cover. cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. This one's a big one. So I paid 20 bucks for this on eBay. And this is the last issue that did the reprints for X-Men. This is issue number 93. Oh, there yep. you go. That is. Yeah. Right after that, that, going toe -to -toe and it came in a Ber Gerber bag and board, too. Oh, there you go. Makes it shine, baby. Yeah, exactly. So that's my bookend for that. That's the last of the reprints right there. 93. Love it. Got some Avengers stuff for you. This is Avengers 264. Oh, that's a cool one. First yeah. appearance of her, too, I believe. Yeah, that's a different version of Yellow Jacket. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see Beast yet. Why is Beast not there? Oh, uh, oh wait, because he's not an Avenger. He's because Beast had left the team because, you know, he had figured that he, he had achieved all the highs he could as an Avenger and it's time to move on. And she ended, up be, she ended up becoming a part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, yeah, she did. Did she? Yellow mm -hmm. jacket, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, here's, she went to the future and became one of the Guardians. Here's a guest appearance by the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, 316. Oh, Fighting yeah. the hordes of Nebula yeah. for the life of Star Fox. This one's a cool cover. I dig this. Uh, they're getting ready to pick a new team of Avengers. This is issue number 329. Oh, yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. And when yeah. they and then when they unmask the guy that's in the black there right behind Cap's shoulder, they mm -hmm. unmask him and reveal who he is at the end of the issue at, where he's a reserve Avenger. And it's if you haven't read it, you will absolutely I have not read it yet. You will absolutely not see coming who it is. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he there kept jetting on the carpet, so Jarvis kicked him out. Wow. Get yeah. out of here, beast. <laughs> I've had it with all this blue fur. Uh, here is Avengers 344. I love this cover. Oh, that's such a great yeah, cover. Yeah, that's a great Forward cover. Through, yeah. 
Yeah. Everybody knows really Beast cool. never was on the carpet in Avengers Mansion. He just bounced bounced around on the walls. Just bounced yeah. on the walls. Yeah. Here's some awesome Ghost Rider goodness. This is issue number 31, the last part in the Rise of the Midnight Sun series. Nice. nice. Beautiful uh Andy Kubert artwork, by the way. Love it. Uh then we have issue 41. Books are sliding. God tell them to stop. There we go. Issue 41. I'm slowly working toward getting this back up to where it was. I used to have nearly the full run. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I got to work on that again. Super uh, Secret Wars number six. Love this cover. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, very cool. And I got it yep. for the nice price of $6. Oh, that's a good deal. Oh, that's, that's, that's a very good deal. It was so funny that they only did that series so that they could have a toy line based on so they it. They could sell toys. Yeah. They could sell yeah. toys because DC did so well with superpowers. Yep. But the Secret Wars toy line didn't do very well, but the, the comic was a huge success. Yeah. Uh, Sensational She Hulk number four. This is uh, the John Byrne run, I believe. Oh, yeah. So good. It is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Surgeon. Warning, the Surgeon General's office has determined that this scene does not appear in this magazine. Love it. My Golden Age guest star is supposed to meet me here. Where is she? Right here, She-Hulk. Beautiful copy of Iron Man. Uh, this just looks gorgeous. The blue one here is unblemished, and it is issue 208. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah that's that cool. looks great. The Sectorian armor. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Yeah, I always like that. <laughs> I always thought it was supposed to be when I was a kid. I thought it was red and white, and I guess it's supposed to be red, red and, and silver. silver. Yeah, red they didn't make it look silver at all. No, here is a gorgeous, uh, spectacular Spider-Man number eighty-one early appearance of Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, oh, cool. And that's minty nice. fresh too. That looks nice. really nice. Love it. This is one issue that I have been trying to get for a long, long time. This is early Stephen Platt. This is Moon Knight number 60, the last issue in the entire series for Mark Spector Moon Knight. Check that out. No, oh, that's a great cover. Ooh, yeah. 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 It's got some spine ticks on it, but uh I got it and I'm happy with it. Finally, I've been wanting this for years. Yeah, that Those black cover in nice shape is hard to find. Yeah. Those books oh. were so hot when they came out and like yeah. so hard to get because at the end of the series, the print runs were low because nobody had been super ordering low. It. Yeah. And he got to be super popular, but by the time like they didn't have time to like they gave him the last up. two or three issues, I think. And that it was, was the it. last few, yeah. And and they'd already canceled the book. And yep. then he hopped over to do profit for image. And then yeah. he just kind of disappeared. Yeah, you don't see him anymore. Uh, here is Daredevil Fall from Grace, Chapter 4. This is issue number 323, guest starring Venom. Nice. Very cool. I love that cover. Mm -hmm. uh, got the uh, last single issue I needed for 1985. If you haven't read this, this is one of my all-time favorite series. I've read this probably more than anything else I have in my collection. Oh, that's cool. Love the series. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, uh, Punisher War Journal oh. number two. Uh, this is a great cover. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. That's a great one. I got that one. Yeah. Now, before these, I kill somebody, let me take off this shirt. These, <laughs> these next ones are, are kind of big ones. So I had a copy of this before. Had it graded at a 9-2, and I sold it uh, not too, too long ago. Uh, and now I have another copy of it, and this, I think, will grade out higher than a 9-2. Uh, and this is The Incredible Hulk, number 449. Uh, first Thunderbolt. Nice. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I've got that slabbed. That well, this, I think, will grade higher than a 9-2. It needs a press. Uh, I don't see any visible spine ticks or anything like that, but I haven't really examined it overall. Uh, but I think this is a good nine four to nine six. Candy. Okay, we'll see. Mine's a nine two as well. Yeah. So I know you and I had twins for the longest time. Yep. Now, Gary, Here we go. This, this officially 
right here is now the oldest comic book I own. Oh, it's a 10 center. So uh, 1954, that counts as golden age, right? That is golden age. Okay, so this is the oldest book I have. It's from Atlas. So pre-Marvel. Uh, it is here. Let me get the sticker off of here. So now whoever had this when they were a kid in the white for the, the lettering of the title, they colored it in with crayon, red crayon. So, but but I, I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. It adds to whatever story this book has to it, right? Uh, but it's it's nice for its age. There are pieces missing, and I'll point that out here in a second. Battlefront 17. Oh, it's a war book. Oh. Yeah, that is great. That now is... you can see the red. Yeah. Yep. That's okay, though. Yeah. Yeah, oh. you're gonna sit with it. Almost looks like blood on the. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Whatever kid had this book was like, that's gonna look really cool. And yeah, the, the <laughs> man, it does. I wonder if that's a Severn or a Manili cover. That's a I really don't know. I couldn't find a whole lot of information on it. But uh, as far as pieces missing, there's a chunk missing right here, and yeah. you can see that's where the just corner. A little bit, though. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got this piece here. Right there. Uh, that's what I think too, Richard. I think that that will come out and I'm going to give it to the guy that does a lot of the cleaning and pressing for my books recently and see what he can do with it. He says he specializes in older books. So we will see. Um, there's also a piece missing down here and you can see oh, some yeah. of the damage and stuff. But beyond that, I haven't taken it out yet. So I'll do that right now while we're on the show. Is that uh, across the R and the logo? Is that a stain or is that part of the art? Like, is that smoke? that is a stain? Okay, I, I didn't know if it was that or if it was like smoke coming off of the gun. So, so what's, uh, what's the official title of it? Battlefront. Battlefront. No with 48 hyphen. issues. It went 48 issues. So, there we go. We got that, and you can see some more staining on the book itself on the back end, right over in the corner, mm -hmm. but it holds very tight and uh the cover is yeah it's detached so you can see where it's detached right down there at the bottom but uh it's got that smell the but interior for your oldest for your oldest book though that's awesome to get dip into the 50s yeah, yeah. well i i have a couple other books from the 50s but not as old as 54 yeah, uh, yeah. So it's it's nice. It's a nice book. This will get pressed, cleaned, and preserved uh, as best as I can do it. What no, what number do you say it was again? Seventeen. 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 I'm yeah. Looking 17. It up. yeah, I can't find I can't find the cover artist either. But I would think it's either I think it's either Manili or Severin. Pam says, that's awesome. One of my favorite books is when I finally figured out the kid had been eating spaghetti while reading the book. That's great. Wow. Pam, what book is that? TJ's asking. I want to know. Please let us know what book that is. That's wonderful. But yeah, Battlefront 17, 10 cents. Uh, I, I kind of like the red on there, you know, to yeah. be honest with you. I, I really do. I, I It just tells that story, and, and I think that's really cool. All right, that's what I got for back issues this week, gentlemen. That's half of what I had the last time. Mm -hmm. Sal, what do you got this week for back issues, buddy? Oh, big fat Easter egg, ladies and gentlemen. Easter Happy egg. Easter, by the way. Happy Easter. Happy right. Easter. It's Easter. There we go. There you go. Dan, what about you? What do you got for back issues? Uh, I don't have anything for back issues, but I got that stuff I pulled out to. Uh, yes, please show that. So I thought, you know, I got, you know, all my old video game systems still going back to when I was a kid. And I was like, you know, like in comics, I always like comic video games. So I thought I'd pull out, pull a few out to show off and see who else remembers them. So should I start recent and work backwards or start older and more older back? and work up? Uh, Red Pam, Circle Madhouse. Yeah. 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 Pam says the book that uh, the kid was eating spaghetti with is Red Circle Madhouse. That's <laughs> fantastic. Well, appropriate, it was red circles since it got red sauce on it. There yeah, you go. Right. All right, Dan, show us what you got, buddy. All right, so this is clear. This is by far not all the comic video games are out. These are just the ones that I had and still have. 
So we'll start off with some um, NES cartridges. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I did not have the foresight as a kid to save the boxes. <laughs> well, None you know, of us did. Well, wow. you know, now with Sega and PlayStation and Xbox and all that, they made the cases where they were meant to be saved. Nintendo back in the day, they were just cardboard boxes. You just, yeah, you know, those things were crushed in a heartbeat. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like you didn't think to save them because I don't need the box because you took the game out, you took the <laughs> instruction book out, and then you, you know, you would have these, um, the you plastic know, sleeves. sleeves that you would put them in, and and that's that's what you would do. And you know, most people didn't save the boxes. I am most people, but I, I'll start out with a good one: the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh. Uh -oh. I loved that game as a kid. It is one of the most difficult games ever made. Oh and yeah, it that's... Is so much fun. That. Part of it where you have to swim and deactivate the bombs. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Oh my god! And you see the clock ticking down. Yeah. And the, the one part of it where you're having to go through and there's like all the electric, um, you know, the, the yeah, like, um, seaweed or something you got to swim yeah. through. But so like, I noticed, how in the fuck am I supposed to beat this stupid game? <laughs> and notice the cover art. The like the comic, they're all wearing red masks because yeah. originally in the comic, they all had the same color mask. The only way to tell them apart was by what weapon they had yeah. by, by just looking at them. That's a great game right there. Love yeah. it. And um, G.I. Joe. Oh, my God. You <sighs> have that. Holy cow. My cousin, when we used to go in the summers and I Florida, love that. And I would game. visit my my cousin in um in Flor in California. Then when they moved to Florida, we would play this game and so much this, fun. This is one of the ones, if I remember right, it would give you a code when you beat each level. So mm -hmm. when you would go back to password play it, codes, yeah, you would you would put the code in so you could just skip that level because playing old video games for anyone that doesn't remember you. There was no just, oh, I'll just get to a save point and I'll come back oh. to it later. There was no save point. You beat the game while you were sitting there or you That's just right. started over again. Uh, Legend or, of Zelda was the on. first. Yeah, or you left it on. Mm -hmm. Legend yeah, of you, Zelda was the first game to have a uh, save card, a memory card in it. Yeah, I mean, there were some games that like G.I. Joe, Mega Man 2 was one where after you beat each boss, you would get like a little... You know, a little code that you could put in to skip them and, and automatically. Kid Icarus, too. Yeah. Um, this one, I have this. Spider-Man Return Ooh. of the Sinister Six. Nice. Wow. Although, I like the reflection of the eyes. Yeah, That's for, awesome. Yeah. Richard for, says uh, Bubble Bobble had the codes as well. And do you recognize the artwork? Yeah, that is uh, Eric Larson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, still have the I still have the instruction book for it too. TJ TMNT I believe was harder than Mike Tyson's Punch Out by a sight. Yeah. So yeah, remember they used to give you instruction booklets for the games too that yeah. told you, you know, that told you how to uh, how to get through the levels. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Tell that me you got the red. Great. Tell me you got the red cartridge. Well, there was, well, that's that's not for uh, Nintendo. We're getting oh, the Super wasn't... Nintendo ah. for Maximum Carnage. Uh, yeah. A game that I loved playing, uh, Captain America and the Avengers. Oh wow! Let's see it. Let's see it focus. Yeah, that's cool. Come on, camera. Do your job. It says negative. You got, yeah. you got one job. But. You can also see the art on here. I got the yeah. I love I love the is. logo they did for it too. Yeah, yeah, that is cool logo. That is great. And yeah, again, the you know, a little bio on each character that you can play as. Wow. And yeah, getting started, power I you know, it shows you like, oh, here's all the power items yeah. throughout it and and uh yeah, these are you know, oh like oh yeah, and here's the villains that you're gonna fight in it and that's great. Yeah, this was that was a game I played a lot. Um uh, this next one is not one I played a lot because this is one of the worst fucking Nintendo games. Uh e. 
X Men. Oh Unbeatable. my god. This yeah. game sucked. You are bringing out all the nostalgia. This game sucked so bad. So was Beast bad. in that Captain America game, Dan? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, negative. It was Cap, Hawkeye, the white, all white vision, and Iron Man. I don't even think Beast was in that X Men game, was he? No, he wasn't. Uh, nope. No. I bet he been in the, the characters that were, Even the characters <laughs> that were in the Gary. Maybe if you blow on the cartridge, Beast will appear. <laughs> if you blow on the cartridge three times and say mm-hmm. Avengers two, listen, uh, I know, I know, yeah. I know. If you blow on certain things, a Beast will appear. So. My God. <laughs> but yeah, unlike the X Men arcade game, which was fantastic, this game was just the biggest piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever. I don't know if any of you ever played it. It's I have terrible. not. It's the you know even for an, even for a Nintendo game the graphics sucked. Oh my god! And it's just you're just walking around this like maze, blasting these random shapes. Just these next these last two Nintendo ones I have to show you were two of my favorite ones though that I played so much. Silver Surfer. He's not even on the, the case. cover. Yeah, where the He's heck is not, he? But he is on the cover of the. Of the instruction book, Snoop says the uh, X Men game was a turd. Turd, <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah, you rem- Yeah, you know, it was. <laughs> but yeah, Man, Silver Surfer cool. was on was on the cover of. Uh, Richard know. says he was tricked many times by Blockbuster renting that game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Silver Surfer was one where you selected which one you were gonna, which world oh, you were gonna wow. go to. And who you were going to fight, who the boss was, you would fight at the end. You got Fire Lord, Mephisto, oh. all these ones. And the cool thing about this book was, you know, it's, it's yeah, what? Reptile, Mephisto, Scroll Emperor, Possessor, and Fire Lord, you know, as the, wow. as the bosses. And, you know, it gives you all this info on Silver Surfer, real name, you know. Oh, wow. Status. Thing. But it also has now for his latest adventure. And it came with the mini comic too. Yeah, no and kidding. And that's part of the instruction book. And the artwork in this is pretty nice too. Richard yeah, says Silver the Surfer. Silver Surfer game was tough. Yeah, it was a tough game, but it was a lot of fun. I played it. I played it a lot. Wow. I remember yeah. the Joe Satriani album Surfing with the Alien. I used to have yeah. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then this other one was another Nintendo game I played a ton. Wolverine. Wolverine. Oh yeah, oh, I played the wow. shit out of that. Yeah, this uh, Jim Lee art on it. Yeah, yeah, this was such a great game, and it had uh, you, you could get some of the, a couple of the X Men. You could like unlock them to appear and like help them out occasionally. It was Psylocke. Jubilee and Havoc, if I remember correctly. No Cyclops, of course. No. <laughs> and, uh, the instruction book for it, and you know, it's the uh, what's oh, going wow. down. <laughs> and uh, so it's, yeah. it's interesting, they, they pulled uh, pictures right out of the comic. Oh, yeah. yeah. So these were not drawn for the instructions because that one uh, shot of nice, Wolverine beautiful was, was clip from, uh, after he got blasted by Doctor Doom, I just remember that. Excuse that me. Yeah, it's got here's here's all the levels. Oh wow! And then it's got the uh, Wolverine life stuff. <laughs> Wolverine and his friends. Oh my and then god! Got a little um, Wolverine yeah, ain't like got a, no friends. You know, well, a little thing for each character that, like I said, that's <laughs> able to. That's able to pop up during the game to help him out. Is wow, they listed among his friends. Uh, no, <laughs> those are the only friends. And then now, here's the enemies Cyclops yeah. is on that list. Yeah, <laughs> oh, and then it's also it got is. hot tips. Hot tips. Hot hot tips. tips. Wow, hot that's tip. great. So, you know, that's it for the, for the comic games I had for. Nintendo. Nintendo. Now, after Nintendo, I 
I started my video gaming career with a ColecoVision and Atari, oh, yeah. then moved on to you know to um, Nintendo, and then after Nintendo, I moved on to the uh, you know there were the two game systems that were big at the time. There was Super Nintendo and Sega, and I had the Sega. 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 This one, which was you know strange that it got a game because it was a fairly obscure comic, which was. X mutants. Oh wow! I never That's read early comic. Malibu stuff. Yeah, I I'll be honest. I never really read the X mutant comics. I flipped through it some, but I had a lot of fun playing the game. And you know, see, this is when they when they yeah. um, started Pam, making releases. Pam Act Razor was amazing. I love that game. And uh, yeah, so you got the the cartridge and the. You know, this is when they were still giving you, you know, the instruction books on, yep. you know, on what to do. And, you know, and yep. so, of course, you know, this is pre-internet, too, because I guess they expect now that you just, oh, you know, you just look it up on the internet. But, you know, like, hey, here's all this. Here's all the power ups you can get. And here's what they do. And, you know, all the collectibles and how to get through the games and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, this was a really cool game. I didn't know they made a game for that. That's awesome. Well, they also made this one, which was pretty cool as well. Now I have that. I, I have that over yeah. there. I'm pretty yep. confident I do. Yep. So wow, they do you know, Macy's move. Yeah, this was a really fun one. And uh. Richard, you are exactly correct, sir. Nintendo Power was the pre-internet. Oh, yeah, man. I had a subscription Nintendo Power. <coughs> I don't have the issues anymore, but I still have a couple of, like, they would occasionally send out guides yep. specific to games. I know I still have my Ninja Gaiden one. I think I still have my Mario Brothers 3 one. Uh, but, yeah, here's, you know, remember this game had special moves the characters could do. So here's, like, yep. all right, here's a... Here's the instructions for what moves each character can do and how you do them. Nice. And uh, that was a uh, that was a good game, which was followed up, I thought, by one that was even better, which was X Men Two. Now I got this. This is just a cardboard box, but still, yeah. You know, wow, that's cool. Very cool. That was. And this game was super as fun as this one was. This one was so much better, too. Wow, that's oh, rare man. when the sequel is better than the first. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't it, remember that one. It was so great that, <coughs> more that we all remember Maximum Carnage. Yes, yep, I still have that. I still M have that somewhere. MA 13. Did you get the red, red case? Cartridge. Red cartridge. Any of these awesome? You mean this one? Yep, yep. there, there it is. Yes. Yeah, this was a cool storyline, a cool game. Is that Bagley art? That, that is. is Bagley art, baby. Way back in the day, ladies and gentlemen, when we were doing Codex Gaming, that was one of the games I live stream played, and I think I made it halfway through the game. And it's like, look, again... When the games gave you instructions on how to do the controls. Yeah. And it wasn't just, yeah, figure it out yourself, dummy. Good luck. Oh, here's what the power-ups are. <laughs> you know, and it's, um, yeah, you know, here's Team Spider-Man and all the characters. Wow. And uh, that game was the hottest damn yeah. thing out at the time. Yeah. And, you know, tells you what the stages, you know. Stages yeah. are and yeah, it's just God. This was such a it's such a great. I don't know why I'm saying it was. It's still a great game. Yeah, Gary, did you ever have that one? No, I I didn't. I never even knew that that Carnage game existed. Oh wow! I, I remember having the one X Men game he showed, and then I think the Phalanx. Yeah, you know, I had that. But the the cool thing too about Maximum Carnage, like you know, the red cartridge was badass. Yeah. I remember getting this on Christmas and being like, oh. "So was that a premium to get the red cartridge?" Yeah, because they had the the regular like for Sega they had the black cartridge, black and then the Super Nintendo was the gray. But 
they had those red ones. How did you know you were going to get a red or it was random? Because you couldn't open those I, back then, right? Weren't they no, sealed? No, they yeah. were all shrink wrapped. Yeah. So yeah. how did you know you were going to get a red or was it random? I think it was random. I Unknown. I, I don't remember. It, it may have been advertised as like a hype sticker, red cartridge on the inside or something okay. like that, but I, I can't wonder, remember offhand. I want to say that it was like the initial run was red cartridges and then they mm-hmm. switched them to the black ones. I'm. It's been yeah. so long. I don't. I don't remember yeah. exactly why. But the cool thing is, you know, it was such a big storyline. There were all the characters in the storyline, and like you can see, all these characters. Everybody in the game too. Like, wow. Even, yeah. now the, even now, like Firestar and you know Captain America, Cloak yeah, and Captain Dagger, Rock and Iron Fist, and like they all, sh- all these characters show up in the game too. And it was a, you know, it would have been easy for them to like, oh, this is the hot book and the hot crossover at the time. Let's just throw some crap together. They made a cool game for it too. Yeah. And uh, the op- the uh, the story sequences in between levels were taken right off of the pages. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I only got a, a few more. I just got, I guess I don't have all the games that I had, but um, I have this one for the original PlayStation for the gr- series Danger Girl. Wow. With, okay. Uh, this character that was created for the game. I had no idea they did a Danger Girl. Neither did yeah. I. Because if you remember the, the comic, there were three Danger Girls uh, when the comic started. And in the first miniseries, at the end of it, it was revealed that one of them was a traitor, was a spy. So when they did the game, you know, that was, you know, well after that, they had the two main ones and then they created another one for the game so they could have three of them in there. Wow. And it was a, um, it was a decent game. It was not, you know, it wasn't spectacular. You know, it's, um, you know, again, limited by the, uh, by the, the graphics uh, capabilities at the time, but you know, and again, like you know, here's all the stuff you can get in the game. Um, yeah, you know, see what's highlighted there. What the, yeah. you know, what yeah. the focus is. <laughs> and that was Jay Scott Campbell, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. So it shows you stuff on the on the different characters, and you know, stuff on what your missions are in it. And what's cool too is at the end of this. It's a bunch of promo sketches. Oh wow! For the uh, you know that he had done for the game that they threw in the back of the instruction book for it. That's cool. You know what? This would be a pretty cool. I'm thinking about it, this would be a pretty cool thing if I ever see him at a convention to get him get to him sign. to autograph it. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how many of those he signs? Probably not many anymore. I I would imagine when it came out a lot, but. I would guess not that many anymore. And, wow. uh, you know, the, uh, you see the disc. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That I is like that. great. That's cool. And then I got two PlayStation 2 games. Now, I could have pulled, I haven't really played, had, you know, since my daughter Emily was born, I kind of was the end of me being Tell able me to like, have the Punisher play video games. Well, as I say, I I didn't pull out, you know, I got some stuff from like Xbox 360 and PlayStation Mm -hmm. 3, but I didn't pull that stuff out. I I decided to end, you know, to not go more recent than PlayStation 2. So it had cool X-Men games before, and then there was this one. So good. Really good. That's the precursor to Ultimate Alliance. Yes. Nice. Both of the X-Men Legends games were phenomenal. And I thought I had Ultimate Alliance. I guess I I either don't have it anymore or I couldn't find it with because all the stuff my wife has like packed up and I was digging through it earlier. Yeah. Or it might have been it might have been that my brother had it and I just played it. Like I know I had it and that it played it. And um yeah. you know, again, you know, the cool book where it's showing you all the uh I remember Years ago, I was all sick from for work for a couple of days, and I ended up playing that and uh, Half Life Two while I was sick. Yeah, I mean, this loved is, it. Yeah, this is such a fun game. So and, you know, I, I took care of the stuff, so there's no scratches on it. Yeah. I could pop this in right now and play it with no issue. And then one that was not just because I like the character, not just because you know 
it was based on the comic. This is just was always one of my favorite PlayStation Two games. The Punisher when he shoves the guy's head in the fryer uh, grease trap. I lost. Yeah. It. That was that game. based on the movie? No, no. This was just this is just based on the on that the came comic. out before the movie, I believe. Yeah. Did any other yeah. Marvel heroes show up in it? Oh no. This no. was this was uh, where it says M for mature. It earned that rating. There was a scene. Oh man. Yeah. There was the part like at the funeral home when they were there for a mob. <laughs> A mobster's funeral, and the Punisher pops up out of the casket and just starts mowing them all down. Oh and wow! He, and he's chasing them through the um, through the funeral home. And at one point, they have like the 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 big furnace where they cremate bodies <laughs> in the basement to to get information out of a guy. You beat him and you throw him on the slab and you push him into it and close the door, and then you could control the heat on there and you like turn it up a little. And he's you're trying to get him to talk. And you turn it up a little bit, and he's like, ah! yeah. and then you finally do it, and you know, do it enough that you will will break him, and he'll tell you the information you need. And then you have the option: you can either take him back out of that, or you can do what I always did: you can turn it up and burn him to a crisp, and listen to him scream as he dies in there. There's one yeah. part where you like shove the guy's head in the in the fish tank in the deep fryer, the deep fryer where you yeah. have the guy and you. Uh, impale him on the on the wall where he's got like the like the rhino head or something mounted. Yeah, and you impale him on that. This like I said, this game earned that mature rate. Unapologetically <laughs> violent, and it yes. is true to form. And that's Punisher. PlayStation Two. Yeah. yeah, it and I, I'll still say you know. And again, I you know haven't played games a lot. You know, in the I love six, that game. Six years since my daughter was born, but God, I, I'd still sit down and, and spend two hours in front of this, you know, and then oh, great book with. And uh, yeah, and again, you know, I mean, I don't know what the value of these is. I, I know. Oh, the Punisher game holds some weight, and uh, the Maximum Carnage one does too. Yeah, I know that the you know, Nintendo cartridges can, um, you know, can run you some money, the Maximum Car Carnage one too, and. You know, it's just all the game, the gear you had for it, and I don't know if I had it written in here. So right now, uh, Dan, the Punisher on PS2 with game and case goes for about seventy-two dollars. Oh wow! Huh. Yeah, that's uh, on the high. Well, seventy-nine on the high end. Oh no! You know, it's got to add here. This is for. Um, this was not based on the movie. But it came out around the same time as the movie. Uh, there you go. So I think it was capitalizing on it. The movie, yeah. That, that's what would have made sense to put it out then. But it doesn't, um, you know, it's got the rust in it. It's, it's, it's much more based on the comic than, you know, it doesn't really have anything to do with the movie. And it's got the tips Yeah. It. And I had, and I thought I had it written in here. I guess I wrote it in something else. I had uh, the cheat, I had the cheat code for this. That gives you unlimited ammo. Like it gave you, it had a couple different codes. I had the ones that would unlock every weapon, mm -hmm. give you unlimited ammo, and give you unlimited lives. So you could just run around, just causing mayhem and destruction. And it was the so uh, maximum carnage on Sega Genesis that you have goes for about thirty-five bucks. Hmm. But that G.I. Joe one, I think. Uh, I thought the Carnage one was a little bit more. It must have come down come down yeah. since last time. I haven't checked on the value of them in years. Now, the G.I. Joe one, you just have the cartridge, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, you don't have the box anymore, but you have... No, I don't have the box manual. for any of the... I don't have the box for any of them. I mean, the G.I. Joe one I bought used. So the G.I. Joe game, that specific one you have, just cartridge alone goes for seventy dollars. Oh wow. Oh. Yeah. That's a it's 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 a great game. <laughs> all right. Game, yeah. Is that all you got there, Dan, for uh stroll down eight pixel lane? Yeah, that's it. I was just thinking the other, you know, like I talked to you about it, you yeah. know, off the show last week. I was like, hey, you know, my I, I don't know what got me thinking about it, but I was like, hey, it might be fun to pull out some of these older comic based um video games comic based video games and yeah. you know 
So anyone in the chat, you know, I'd say anyone in the chat, drop a comment and let us know which ones you had, which ones were your favorites. Yeah, by all means. All right, Gary, the floor is yours. Dan, thank you so much for showing those uh, yep. that awesome collection of video games. Some beautiful stuff there and great stuff to play. Gary, the time is now. Uh, it is time for the Olympics. All right, let's go. Well, not quite. I got back issues. Oh. Oh. Shoot. I went to a shop show last week. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, one of them. back issue it up and then take us down uh, showcase. All right. Thing. So I only got 16 books. There are a few that I got I already had because that's what I do. But um, a, part of what I got um, last week was a book that we had damages on the first issue, so I didn't get the A cover, and that's the Black Widow Hawkeye. Mm. Nice. So I got the Adam Hughes like C cover, but I didn't get this. But okay. while I was there, I also got um, the B cover, read. which was an art germ Black Widow. Oh, I that's, saw yeah. that. That is amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Yep, so I picked that up. So those were two recent. That was um, a fun read, too. Yeah, it was. It was. This was a foily goodness one. I didn't realize I had it, but I had it. But you know what? That's a thing. Ooh. Oh, a good foil. Yep, so another great foil. Power Girl, Supergirl. So this is my second copy of this. So what, oh well. which, nice. which, uh, which book is that? Um, That is... um. I think it's the Power Girl book. Um, is, it, is that the Power Girl special? I think it's Power Girl special. Yeah, that's from let's the Action Comic storyline. Mm. The one that picked up. After no, that. it's Power Girl number six. Oh, okay. Okay. Power Girl number six. Spoily goodness. So I didn't realize they had already picked it up. But anyway, and what's the Power Girl that came out this week? Was number what seven? So this is what happens. When that's you get last old. month. Yeah, I bought it a month ago and didn't realize I had it. So, <laughs> nice. You know, Power Girl. So I got foily goodness and and breasts did me in. So, <laughs> and blonde hair. Now, here's right an back. alternate. Many of us in. Yeah, here's an alternate that I didn't have before, but I thought was pretty cool. Oh, oh that is cool. That hot what color. a cover. Yeah, that hot so, color thing didn't last very long though, did it? No. No, but I think it's Mayhew did this cover. So that's great. Wow. Isn't that great? So this is the return of Wolverine, one of the variants. And there's a New York Con exclusive of it where it's more of a silvery costume. Wow. But I anyway, I got the idea to have Gambit charge his claws up in the cartoon from the hot claws thing. Yeah, maybe. But no, but yeah, I saw that variant and that was pretty, pretty cool. Um I got one of the five Ghost Riders I needed on my collecting goals to finish number one. So I got number 13. Oh, that's nice. cool. That looks yeah. really nice. The, the Trapster. Yeah. Do we know what the Trapster is? Pace Hot Heat. Yep, one of the wow. dumbest names ever. Anyway, number 13. So now I am 12 up. 12 up, and I need four more of volume one of Johnny Blaze, and I'll have all those. Nice. Got another Marvel team up that I was. Oh, cool! It's a Spider Man and Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, fifty one, number fifty one. Pretty wicked. Yep. Yeah. Uh, How many are you waiting for that one now? Thirty, about thirty issues away. But I have one. I have, you know I have the tougher ones to get on this, or that I already have, so I don't have to worry about. Um, Weird Wonder Tales Ooh. fifteen. That's, That's nice. nice. This finishes it for me. Oh, there Ooh. you go. Yep, so it's 22 issues. So this is one for my goals page. No, nice. it can't be. This planet, it's alive. So see the planet's got teeth. And wow. It's getting ready to eat them. So weird wonder tales about to get eaten. Look well, below. How many issues did that go? I think 22. 22? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they were all pretty fun covers. Um, And then something that... um. I know Dan has these, but this for whatever reason, this was a Rocketeer series I didn't have all of. I didn't I had the first Ooh. issue, but I didn't have two. Wow. I, Dan, I, I believe I cover. sent yeah, that cover. You sent to that to Dan, you. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit, I don't have that. I have the poster of this hanging up here in my basement. So I love that poster. So that's of course a Dave Stevens cover I didn't have. And here's another Dave Stevens cover I didn't have, the final issue wow. of it. 
Ugh. Yeah, because that was the last of Dave Stevens doing the Rocketeer. Yep. So these and he didn't the, even finish it. He had to get other artists to come in and help. Yep. Him. They helped him. They helped him on this. That's right. So the cover was Stevens' <laughs> collaboration on it. So these are two Stevens covers I didn't have. I'm happy to have them, and I finished that Rocketeer set because they had the first issue cover. Now That's an pretty, issue. A very big artist to help him finish that too. Oh well, yeah. Adams Kaluda. was one of them. Yep. And Kaluda. Um, yeah, he, he had a, he had a lot of friends. He had a lot of friends. Um, this is an issue I have, but this is a uh, top ten cover for me, and it's a beautiful copy that I'll probably use as a display copy. Oh, and that's that nice. Brave and the Bold yeah. one one eighteen. <laughs> yes, yeah, Batman nice. Wild Wild cat. Thing Wild this, Cat Wild, Wild Cat, cat. <laughs> and the Joker. It's light, the Sal. We'll let it yep. slide. Thank you, Jim Aparo <laughs> art, the great Jim Aparo art. I and love this, it. Uh, this was one of my um, top covers on the Wildcat. Yeah, we did. Okay. And this is a top. This is a top ten comic cover for me all time. Jim Jim Aparo is uh, doing the well, like in Nightfall. He's one of the uh, lead artists. I'm yes, he is. Man. Yep. Yes, yes, he is. Jim Aparo is awesome. Um, one of the world's finest. I needed. Um. I need about a dozen issues, I think, and I'll have 98 up. So this is um, 179, wow. the giant size. So the giant sizes are always harder to get. And one of the books they're reprinting is this one down here, which is Superman 74, which is a key issue because that's where Superman and Batman learned each other's identities. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Kind of a dumb. They were on a cruise together, and then <laughs> something happened on the cruise and Batman and Superman both appeared, you know, to help out. And so they realized that Wait you're, a playing. Minute. you're Clark Kent. Yeah, so it's kind of dumb, but it's still a key book. All right. I got an example of one of the great, great tone covers. Ooh. GI oh, Combat was that 82. GI Combat 82. Oh, one yeah. of the great Heath is... tone covers. Um, there's probably about 30 issues in GI Combat that were like this, that were that gray tone cover, is wow. what they're known as. And that is just an amazing piece of work. So I'll buy these in piecemeal. I'll get them. You know, I think I'm going to, you know, when I when I get a good deal on one, I'll get it. But these, uh, you know, until I get them all. But these are pretty awesome. So I have maybe, maybe I have about seven or eight of them, and there's about 30 of them. All right. I also got... The, the highest number of detective comics I needed was 277. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. There you go. So yeah. this was the highest number. Is I that needed. what's left of Metamorpho? It kind of looks like Metamorpho, except he wasn't yeah. created yet. But, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a, so that's kind of neat. And this was from, uh, this was an early 1960. Wow. That I needed. And then, so the next issue that the highest I needed was 272. So I knocked that out too. Oh, that's cool. Menace mm -hmm. of the Crystal go. Creature. Right. Now this book is from 1959. So now, wow. so this is 272. So now my detectives, I am 269 up. So we're in golden age wow. there still, right? No, no, this would be considered um, silver age, okay. early silver age though. Golden Age ends like 55, 56. Gotcha. So, Pam oh. says Russ Heath, Sea Devils is really great too. Pam, you know your stuff. Absolutely. The Sea Devil. One, one day I'll bring out the Sea Devils for a um for the showcase. Ooh. The Sea Devils covers the tone, great tone ones he did that were fantastic. And also they had um three issues in uh uh Brave and the Bold or no, it was showcase were Sea Devils covers, and they were also tone covers. Nice. But yeah, Sam, kudos for you. You know what you're talking about. Um, good good job. Um, so now 268 or 269 up is what I have for Detective, wow. and that, that's from uh, mid-1959. So that's, that's pretty good one. Amazing. Yes. One of the Legion appearances I needed still was Adventure <laughs> Comics 293. So this was this was bought from Moving Pictures Comics, the guy where I got those two Spectre issues uh, mm -hmm. that you needed, and he was Rob's nice to me. He gave me an extra discount for brokering that deal with uh, for you, Tim. Nice. So, so I bought he, stuff from him before too. Yeah. He's a good guy. 
He's he's a very good guy. Rob is a very good guy for moving pictures comics. But anyway, this is the second oldest adventure comics Legion appearance I need. I need one more before this, but this was also the first Legion of Super Pets. Oh, wow. So it was kind of a key. Um, So I'm about a dozen issues from having all the Legion appearances. So that's That's great. But I know that's a big milestone for you to eventually get. Yeah, all the Legions. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that was, you know, that was, you know, that was a good price on that, but um, I got a great deal on it. And then the book I didn't expect to get, I showed this last week, and this is from 1950, so this is Golden Age. This is Star Spangled Comics oh, yeah. 106. That's oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And this condition is spectacular on yeah. this one. So it, good you had to show it twice. <laughs> absolutely. I showed it to you, I think, on the meeting when we were doing yeah. it. Yes, yes. And here is the back cover. How, oh, man. how beautiful the back cover is. Yeah, that's how, awesome. Look at them back. shoes. That's, yep. No, it's just so, it just pops. It's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, the, wow. and because this is, I'll even show inside how great it is. I would say, tell them the significance of the... Um, the yeah, well, the, main, the character on the front, Simon Gertie, and that's a historical character that, um, I, you know, on my comic cover of the day, I did um, a, a Grimjack cover by Tim mm-hmm. Truman. That artist did a, uh, a graphic novel about Simon Gertie, who's a real-life historical figure um, during the Revolutionary War era. And at one time, his name was a synonymous with the word traitors, Benedict Arnold. Yeah. But it's a really cool story. And he had his reasons for being a traitor. Colonists were treating him like crap, and he had had enough. So, um, the book is very clean. Mm-hmm. And I'll show you um, some. Weren't, weren't you mentioning like the gloss? Yes. The yeah. Gloss, the gloss is amazing. And look how white the pages are. Oh, so good. Yeah. So, Man. and it's got some of the uh, the sheets in there to absorb the acid in it, um, to keep it acid free. Let's see if I can get another fun page. Um, so white as can be. And the, the final story was a Robin story. He was the at the end of the book. Here we go. Yeah, Snoop says Simon Gertie is very interesting. Oh, yes, yeah. Snoop, uh, Snoop knows all about it because I got him a signed copy. <laughs> of the Simon Gertie book, Wilderness. And it is a factual, historical Ooh. treasure, that book is. Wow. And, uh, I remember, matter of fact, my daughter did a history assignment using that book, and the teacher allowed um, her to use the uh, Simon Gertie book as reference. Wow. So, so that was kind of a big deal. All right, so those are my back issues, and now we're going to do right. a little... Um, Gold, silver, and bronze, Olympic style. Sorry for forgetting about that, Gary. Sometimes when we mm-hmm. get into these things, it slips oh, the old noodle. No, that, that's okay. I don't have, you know, and a lot of times I don't have back issues, but when I do, I really got some. That's right. So, all right. So, we're just going to do a hodgepodge of um, stuff I have in a kind of a pretty good box that I have laying out. So, let's see. What do we have? What do we have for gold? Here we go. Maybe my oldest comic book I own. Yours yours was 1954. Mm-hmm. Let's dip our toes into 1939. Oh, oh wow. There you go. 1939, more, more Fun Comics 50. Yeah. The Spectre's first appearance was More Fun 52. So that would be that would be more fun to have that book, but I don't know. Yes. But this this is a great football cover, and it's from uh Again, 1939. I believe because they're cover dated in advance, I believe this came out in October of 39. But it's okay. this book. And that looks Another gorgeous. Right? Yeah, I got that in Baltimore last year. The fellows were there as I was. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. or was that two years ago? That was two years ago. Because you got the, the, the Wiz. The Wiz, the Wiz. I, got the, I got the Wiz this year. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, so before I got that, my oldest was this. February 1940 Ooh. issue of Adventure Comics for Sandman. Oh, that's nice. Wow. So it's got some condition issues. It's a little beat, but that's all right. It's 1940, though. 1940. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, we haven't even entered into World War II yet. So no, we had not. No, we had not so. Well, um, I mean, with with the condition, it's like I say with so many so many things that I get for my collection. Not to compare it to yours, but I'm like you know what, I'd rather have a beat up copy and have it in my collection than not than have no it at all. Copy. Absolutely. So here's an actual pretty nice copy of Adventure Comics sixty six, which is a Starman cover. Oh, that's oh. great. Mm -hmm. That is nice. This also is the first appearance of the Shining Knight. Oh, mm. and I'm pretty sure it was a, Friz a, a Frizetta did the art on it. Wow. So, anyway, so I love the uh, I love the title the title card. Mm -hmm. I think They're it, like, oh yeah. Those are, that's what Giant I want to get. I love it when the um the logo was uh, a third of the book. Snoopy yeah. says the oldest book he has is from 1941. And that is that that All Star, uh, Chris? Is it the All Star? Probably I'm is. just I'm just happy to have that book from '54. That yeah, to to get it and to have it look like that, so wonderful. Absolutely, I don't know what this is. I'd have to look. That so this is more fun. Seventy-five. Is that early Doctor Fate? Yeah, yes, the that's the half mask. And it says new Aquaman. This is Aquaman's third appearance in this book. Oh yeah, it's also the third appearance of Green Arrow and Speedy. So there, wow. so, uh, more fun. Seventy-two is their first appearance. This also happens to be a Hitler cover because the picture on the wall is Hitler. It's being oh Aquaman. wow! So he's breaking up a Bundes uh, meeting, you know. So, yeah. but more fun. Some and I love the specter in the corner. I'm yeah. glad Doctor Fate uh, changed his outfit. Yeah, well, he, he originally he had the full face mask, and then he went to the half mask. Oh, so wow. the half mask didn't last long. I think people realized that wasn't that wasn't great. Um, it didn't look that good. This yeah, is now crazy. here's where the logo shrunk, and I don't like him as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's that's a, still a cool Green Arrow and Speedy got to keep him flying. World War Two, um, you know. By the war bond thing, but still, yeah, it's golden age goodness. This is 80. What is that? 83. That's wow. kind of that kind of gives me some like Johnny Quest cover vibes. Yeah, yeah I get that. I um, was thinking the same. So, great minds think alike, Sal. What's that? Great minds think alike. Yes, they do. Like. Yes, they do. Oh, that's a, that's yeah, a, that's a flash nice comics book. number 10, 1940. Yeah. Yep. Wow, 1940, nice. and this is a cover. They actually um, reprised this cover on the new issue of Jay Garrick's Flash book. They yeah. had where they showed this issue in the background, superimposed with um, the boom running alongside him. That's Gay uh, Jay Garrick when he was young. Yes, yeah. and yes. it's a young Jay Garrick. Um, how about a ninth appearance of Robin in Detective 44? Oh, Ooh. wow. So Robin had appeared in Detective um, 38, but then he also had um, a couple Batman appearances because um, that book had started and it was a quarterly book. But here's the eighth appearance of uh, Robin. Pre-issue yeah, 50 Detective. That is yeah. great. Look at Batman, you know, hiding behind that uh, <laughs> behind that chimney with this like salty look on his face. Like he's just spying on him. Like, <laughs> What's he doing? And I, and I'm going to take him out. It, God damn it, it's stealing my job. And their bullet hitting the chimney. Yep. Wow. So <laughs> let's see. Let's see if it gets any better. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sure it does. <laughs> How about a Batman 15? Classic oh, cover. Down with the machine gun. Yeah, this was yep. the last big logo Batman before the logo shrunk. So this this is what happens when you spell your sell your spawn comics. You can get books like this. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm selling my spawn yeah. comics. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, that means, so that means if I sell the spawn sketch cover I did, I'll get enough money to buy one of those. Sure. Maybe so. Run. I sold my whole accepted. run of spawn, but yeah. I got that in a few others. This is Superman number ten. Oh, that's cool. This is also the first bald Lex Luthor. So we've got some stains on there. I don't know if I'd give this to Kent though. This is pretty old. So, but number uh, 10, number 10, Superman, number 10. Wow. Number That's 10. Amazing. Oh, how about a Wonder Woman 26? Oh, nice. 
the that golden women and the white star. Yes, mm -hmm. Sal, it pops. It's eh. that electric blue. Jeez. So, um, y'all know who the seven soldiers of victory are, and any idea oh, what yeah. comic they were in? They're in the leading comics. Oh, so that's number four. Leading comics, number four. I always love seven soldiers. Um, Anybody seven that soldiers, fell asleep I'm while they're watching this right now, you are missing out and you're waking <laughs> up and you're like, what yep. the hell is going on? What is he showing? <laughs> Oh, look at all, that. All great. Star 42. Wow. Yep, All Star 42. Wow. So I need to get a big logo, there. All Star. And Justice League kind of did an homage of that a long time later. Justice League it 6. Yeah, yep, yeah. the Amos Fortune cover. Yep, Justice League 6. Um, We'll go away from DC just a little bit. How about uh, the Marvel family? Oh, there you go. Oh, that's yeah. great. And have a Marvel Family cover with Shazam saying "Holy Moly" on it. Holy, Holy Moly! moly. <laughs> so you know, and and that's one reason why I wanted that cover is because I wanted one where he says "Holy Moly." So um, he's cussing. Yeah. Let's see what else. Right we on the cover, Mom. Uh, can I get it? No. Oh my God! This Ooh. is the devil, Captain Marvel. Travels wow, to so other nice. worlds. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in a golden age cap. The big uh, red cheese. That's right. The big red cheese. Here's the whole Marvel family. Wow. And they've done. They've flown through that spaceship and disabled that. Yeah. Because they're battling the pirate planet. <laughs> so that's a beautiful cover. And then Captain Marvel Junior. starred in Master Comics. Oh, wow. So this issue with the caveman was kind of messed up. The caveman got thawed out, and uh, he was running around, causing problems, uh, running around, causing havoc. And he ends up going into a train tunnel, and the train hits him and oh. kills him. <laughs> so no, not so good for the caveman. Oh, my God. Look at Big Metal Snake. Yep. <laughs> um, do you know who Matt Baker is? He's famous good girl art artist in the 50s late 40s this is a matt baker cover oh that's cool mm -hmm. jumbo comics mm -hmm. wow jumbo got that from yeah, um then it's got jumbo you gotta have fight comics oh wow mm. senorita, senorita rio yeah she was a lead character for all. so we, we've taken it we're taking a deep dive into the golden age oh right? yeah yeah White Princess of the Jungle, Honda. Hmm. Wow! I dare say that would uh, that would um, raise some internet comments. comments oh in yeah! The book mm -hmm. today. Well, the Matt Baker one. I wonder what the comments would be on that, or even then. Okay, so Matt Baker was an African American, and he would draw this good girl art with a lot of these, you know, sexy women on it. Mm -hmm. If people had known back then that a black man was drawing that, I bet you that would have been a problem. They'd have lost their minds. Yep. When he died pretty young too. Wings. This is a great. That's a cool. That's letter. a cool. Uh, the letter A on there is that a stamp? Right on letter. her thigh. Oh yes, that's a stamp. Oh that's nice. Stamp. Okay. Yeah. So somebody somebody stamped it. Fire hair. So I got to think for redheads as y'all know. <laughs> so. Get a lot of redhead covers. Um, Airboy, one of my favorites. Oh, Ooh. nice. That's cool. That is cool. I like that one. And I got one more Airboy cover. That's Ooh. cool. Yeah, that's yeah, neat. Short. There we go. He's so, totally so, oh, I'll show you a silver now. I'll show you some gold. Johnny Quest. Ooh, some gold oh, key. Oh, yeah. That's the that's the, the first only issue, right? Quest. Is that the only? Is that the single? Yes, that's the only one that appeared there. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, y'all know this issue. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got, got some wood. You got wood. Oh, yeah, what? I got some wood. Chris, that was for you, buddy. What do you know? What wood? Wood do you know? Wood uh, do you know? Wood my you lord. Know. <laughs> yep. All right. So there's some. Uh, 
and I, I guess I have to, there's a couple silvers. I'll show you a couple other silvers so I can live up to my, I suppose, and I, I do have at least one bronze in here. If the big silvers are in there that, uh, of the superhero age, you can show those too. Oh, Even you sure? I've seen them before. Even though you've seen them before, it doesn't get old? No. Well, I mean, the books continue to get old, but it's like seeing them yeah, that, again for the first time. That is very true. Let's see. What, what, what do we have, y'all? And, and besides, we got people in the chat now that have not seen you show those Okay. Books. So when Flash got his own book, it started. Yeah. It took over where Flash Comics ended in 104. Starts up at 105 after the four showcase issues. That's so, first uh, Mirror Master. Right? First Mirror Master. Yes, it is. Um, so that's 105. 106 I'll show because it's got a pink cover and it's in super high grade. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And this is like 1958, I guess, this book. That's so, amazing. That's, so that's that's pretty good. So that's also the first Gorilla Grad, too. This book. Ooh. Yeah. Um, we'll jump ahead a little bit. Let's see if there's oh, let's see, there's one. First kid flash, 110. Wow. Whirling hands of death. Mm -hmm. And this is a weather wizard. Might have been the first weather wizard. He's taking doing the helicopter to a whole new level. <laughs> well, you know, I like it. I like it when he takes the motorboat to a whole nother level. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that was book. <laughs> oh my god! That was one they didn't even bother to give him his own costume. They were just like, "Oh, here's the Flash's costume. We're just gonna draw him a little bit shorter." <laughs> yeah. All right. Where's the one I'm looking for? That. Oh yeah, this is the one. Y'all have seen it before, so it's no big deal. But. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. She is. Oh she man. Is. Look I at love that. that cover. I love look, that cover. Look at look the condition. condition. Oh, the, very good. Look at the condition on that. So, what a. A key book. What a I'm key coming. book to have like that. Help me, Flash. Help me, Flash. Uh, let's see. What other Flashes might you like? Maybe the first Zoom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one, we've jumped back. That's first elongated, man. Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah. Let's see. The DC's Mr. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. There it is. There it is. Wow. Well, Mr. Fantastic is Marvel's Plastic Man. That is yeah. also true. Mm-hmm. Yep, so that's the first Zoom. Let's see. All right, this is a big deal because it's the first Silver Age Aquaman Adventure 260. Wow. So it doesn't show them on the cover, but it does mention that it is... Um, Adventure Comics 300 is a very iconic cover. Nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So this has been this has been replicated quite a bit. Um, the only Plastic Man issue I have is when he was with Quality, and that's issue number uh, 56. That's an old book. Yeah. That I don't remember book. what year that came out. I think it was 55 or something yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. All right, this Army at War 81 is a Sergeant Rock prototype. For many years, this used to be considered the first Sergeant Rock, but within the past 20 years, 82, or is it 83? I think it's 83, is considered the first Sergeant Rock now. And even this, it says the Rock of Easy Company on the right. cover. And that's why, for, and when DC did their Millennium issue books, where they reprinted a lot of their great books in... Um, um, the year 2000, mm -hmm. this was the army at war. They reprinted because they were saying that's the first rock, but since then it is turned to 83. So, but wow. it doesn't matter. I've got both of them. So there you go. It. There you go. There, um, this do you is know why they changed it? I do not know. And it was more, it was more of a, I guess, dealers in the public changing it. You know what I mean? Where the consensus was DC didn't have anything to do with it. So, this is the famous roster cover of Sergeant yeah, yeah. One Pro. I, I like love that. this cover. I love this cover. Look how great Rock is on that. When oh, we wow. do, when we do our Sergeant Rock show, this is going to be a hard one to keep out of it. Um, yeah. Now was Sergeant it. Rock the only one in Easy Company to smoke? No, 
No. Okay. He was probably not. all of them did. Yeah, probably, well, probably all they all did, but oh, that's on that right. cover. Right. He's the only one I know. Um, you know, he Nick Fury was the cigar guy, but Rock would have a cig. There's my Strange There's so Adventures 9. Oh, I and love this is, that. This Carmen Infantino did this cover, and it's... Um, it's the black on here. Oh, it's just gorgeous. See, this if I was this. a kid back then, Strange Adventures, I think, would have been my title. Yeah, I think so, too. This was a sci-fi book. This is issue number nine, and this is the first appearance of Captain Comet. Wow. Okay. So that's the first Captain Comet. Um, Strange Adventures, I'm going to show you two other issues that are highly sought after in Strange Adventures. And this was the issue. This is the book where Dead Man came from and the book yeah. where Animal Man came from. Um, so this, this is a book that everybody wants and is a little pricey. Yeah. A great one. Yeah. yeah. I posted that before around Christmas. Mm-hmm. So it's everybody wants book. that. And then here, and 110 is the other one that people love because they are. Oh, oh that, the hand from beyond. Yep. That's great. Isn't that great? Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> I love that stuff. The, I the know, I know old, sci -fi. heavy sci-fi, UFO lot. craze, all of it. Yeah. I The covers are so wild to me. All right. This is a tough damn book in any condition. First Brainiac. Ooh. Right. To action, 242. This book is tough. It's expensive. That's it's got cool. the purple cover. Mine is beat up, but I'm just happy to have the damn thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then I'll show you. I'll show you another Silver Age that is I have in nice shape, and I've had it for a long, long time. Two fifty two is first Supergirl. Oh, oh. yep, yeah. Is that she is friend or foe? Mm -hmm. And that's and this book is in pretty nice shape. So. Yeah. Uh, spoiler is, alert: she's friend. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a uh, that's a big boy book there. That's yeah. Cool. Um. Well, that's Bronze Age. I'll save that for Bronze. Um, I've seen this before. I've seen the Aquaman one. Look at that. Yeah, it doesn't say number one, just like the Green Lantern from a few weeks right. ago. And what was the right. reason for that? Why didn't they put the number ones on there? Because the shopkeepers, they would they would ask the distributors, have I been getting this book? I don't want any new books. Just give me what I've been getting. And if they see a number one on there, they go, I haven't been getting this book. But they don't put a number one on there. They and the distributor say, "No, you've been getting that book." <laughs> so, <that's, laughs> so, so they're like, dumb. "Oh, okay, yeah, sure." Wait a minute, number two. And this this is so glossy and beautiful. Looks like it just came off the rack. Hawkman oh, number no. one. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that does have a number one. That was a little later. So this is probably 1966 or so. I have yeah. issue 16 from that run. Mm -hmm. So I'd be awesome. interested to know what book it was they started when when they would print a number one where it would actually have number one on the cover for when DC was I, I don't know, but I mean, for a while there, they did have the number ones, but it's just yeah. in the early 60s there for about maybe a year or so. So this is a Hawkman number four, and why is this a big cover? Deal? First Satana. First Satana. Yeah. I want that book so bad. Uh, you know, the other, the other sure title... Did. The other title you would have liked is Mystery in Space. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so there's a great Hawkman cover. Wow. Uh, Murphy Anderson on Mystery in the Space. All right, so let's see. So those were the silvers, and then we'll finish with, I have three bronzes for you. Perfect. Ooh. Oh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76. Uh, this is my bad copy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a bad copy. I, my, I my love bad. that copy. I love that book. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Um, and this beauty, First Warlord. Wow. First issue, Special 8. Yep. That's nice. Yep. That's first a Mike cover. Grill. Cool book. And the other bronze one will end on a damn high note. Oh! There you go. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And who is that gorgeous woman on the cover? Well, you can see her at the Big Lick Comic Con. That is Louise Simonson. There we go. Mm -hmm. And there was there was something I was reading 
about a week ago that there was a character that was created back then and i forget it might have been oh i think it was madeline Pryor that they based uh the artist based her look on louise simonson i remember wow. reading that and knowing about the swamp thing one and being like i did like every artist just back then just have such a crush on louise simonson they're like <laughs> i draw this character to look like her Everybody probably they, they 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 did they lived so you know of course bernie wrightson and you know kaluta also the, his good friend posed for that um interior art on that too playing uh the bad guy in that story the house of secrets uh, 92 story but uh they all had a crush on her and she was like the den mother to all of them back then she was uh louise jones yeah so wow. she was she was married to jeff uh i think it was jeff jones um so all Just right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for sticking with us for almost three Woo! hours jamie, jamie didn't make it did he goodness probably not he's probably jamie, couldn't make it. jamie dropped out a while ago ladies and gentlemen That's gary thank you thank you so much for the showcase the uh, olympics gold silver and bronze dan thank you so much for showing off mm -hmm. those amazing video games sound best being fashionably late you're fashionable always thank and you sir. me myself i have the distinct pleasure of sitting amongst the best in uh youtube stratosphere talking about comic books thank you tj tj thank you so much man uh yeah happy easter everybody for yep, those same to celebrate TJ. enjoy take your kids out and uh do some easter egg hunting i know some comic stores did stuff like that by all means, go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Sunday's the day of rest. Sit back, relax, kick your shoes off. Holy moly, great show, y'all. Exactly, Holy Pam. <laughs> Pam. Thank you, Pam. Snoop, thank thanks you, so thank much, you, man. DJ, Good to see you, Richard. Chat. Happy Easter, Chris, Snoopy. Yep, Chris, have a great, have a great deal, uh, day, buddy. I uh, hope to see you soon, my brother. Absolutely, guys. And Richard, as thank always, you, Richard. man, thank you so much. All right, guys, it is late. We are getting yes. out of here. We are all old men, and our Mylanta is waiting for us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, by all means, Uncle Gary, give this to them. We have it. They want it. Oh, all of us here, especially late at night, we have all the socials, and we would like nothing more than to give them to you. There you go, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Dan will give you the old one-two while Gary gives you the socials from behind. Wes oh, comes in yes. with a, a needle that is not filled with a vaccine, and I just laugh maniacally as you hit like, share, and subscribe so you don't that miss needle, all this stuff. That needle's got penicillin in it. There you go. <laughs> old penicillin. And ladies and gentlemen, when you wake up in the morning on the next day and you have stitches and spots where organs used to be, uh, Dan's making <laughs> you breakfast. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Dan's making you breakfast, Sal stitching you up, and Gary and I have gone to the store to get milk and cigarettes. Uh, head over to the codexstation.com for all your codex needs. Get some merch, meet the team, and so much more. Once again, the codexstation.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Dan's finished his soda. It is time to get out of here. Thank you so much again, ladies and gentlemen, for an awesome night. Comics Unleashed, Codex After Dark. Don't forget to catch us on all the other shows we do, the podcast, Comic Character of the Week. Who's the next Character of the Week coming up? Power Girl. Power ah, Girl, baby. There we go. And that humming, is humming, on humming. its way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for the last time tonight. I'm Tim the Terrible. This is Sal the Slab Guy. Over there in that corner is Dan the Kelly Art, the road manager for the curator of the Library of Comics, Uncle Gary. We will see you as soon as I hear those beautiful words. Gaping holes! <sighs> now I can go to bed. All right. <laughs> Hulk 180. Oh, even better. Going to dream sweet dreams. Anything Hi, else? Sonny Kruger of the Codex Station. <laughs> give, give it. it. Gaping hole. Oh, uh, you know a raccoon can fit up your butthole, ladies and gentlemen. Just sleep on that tonight. We love you. Bye. Wow. <laughs> Go. Hippity hoppity. What? Hippity hoppity. Down the bunny trail. Yet?